already on the board. On the 18th, we're going to call the meeting to order. Uh, first agenda item is consider additions or adjustments to the agenda. Anybody have any? I'd like to discuss uh, going back to one meeting. That's a big one to add, but um, maybe, up to you. maybe we'll add that. I'll second that one. We'll add that underneath agenda item 16. I don't care where you put it once we talk. I'm gonna those. I've got one here, Jake. Yeah. Okay, what's that? That would be um, given the that's locked. other business uh, discussion from Paul Morton. Asking us to start the process for changing form based code. I would like us to put it back in the officially request the planning commission. You understood. So that'll be underneath the previous request. Um, I would like the town administrator to figure out what's going on with that darn electric charge in these experiments. Move to run. Um, do we need to discuss that in the meeting, or are you just asking for Tom to do a little bit? Well, I don't feel like I can. We can do that on the 13th. Ask him without. We do that on the 12th. If he worked personally for me, it would be a better story. You could do it under select board concerns. Okay, done. That's where that's going. I go to Mark. Mark. We have a second waiver of noise ordinance request from Tuesday Night Live. It's in the packet. Um, and can we add a delegation to the Historical Society Board of Trustees? Uh, yeah, I was going to add that. That we're going to do right before item number nine. Uh, no, we're going to do it right underneath six. Sorry. All right. Uh, one more thing, Evan. If we did just have a general discussion item about, um, I guess communication with the public would be a good uh, header. Just put you right there. A way for us to communicate about what we're doing, um, specifically in response to the flood, but more generally, um, you know, big action items that the select board is taking on the town's behalf. Uh, yeah. Because there's been a lot of buzz of, you know. What is the select board doing about this or that or the other things? And I'd like for us to be a little more communicative about that. Do you want it to be a straight up topic? Are you okay with uh, issues and concerns? We have a discussion about it. And yeah, it. Uh, we can have a discussion about it now or later. All right, let's do it under uh, issues and concerns because it's valid for sure. Okay, any others? I have broader topics that I want to discuss. Probably not at tonight's meeting, but I, I just think that um, we, we need to um, think about <clears throat> visioning as a select board. I think that goals perfectly fits into 13. Okay, good. I, I'm, I'm going to sign for basketball. I feel it. Okay. Uh, hearing, hearing no others. Uh, Item number two is review invoices and orders. The previous board, Mike, didn't read them all aloud. We kind of just go through them throughout the meeting. There's questions to go over. You good with that? Go on. Okay. Those are being passed around. Took me forever to get to that. Next item uh, is considering approval of minutes for March 4th. This is the uh, be February 21st, March 4th, and March 6th. Yep. I was just going to say that March 4th, 6th. And February 21st. There was two meetings on Mark on February 21st. And we have the minutes for both. So what is the board's pleasure? Well, there was, there was the public hearing and there was this light board print. I know and Donna did send both of us out. <clears throat> but if we won't we yeah, I didn't time. read either one point. Okay. Sorry. <clears throat> I'll make a motion to move all four sets of minutes. So, so the three meetings and then the public hearing. Okay. So motion on the floor. Is there a second? What was the motion? How did that include my search? Um, yes. Shane's motion was for 
the public hearing on February 21st, the select board meeting on February 24th, the select board meeting on March 4th, and the select board meeting on March 6th. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Yes, second. By All right. Any further discussion? And I do have one to add. Um, very minute, but the select board meeting on February 21st, Beth called the meeting to order not me. I know oh, that's like I silly probably. small. Okay. Um, everything was accurate. Okay. Minor. The motion and the secretary agree to an amendment. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Abstain. For all of my seven minutes. Mike Abstain. Okay. You guys have it. Uh, number five is planned purchases. And this is in the packet. Hey, hey, I checked that off and I didn't mean to. Why can't I mix it up? You know? <laughs> yeah. Too much? You want to change uh, the order in the gym? No, thanks for calling me on that. Uh, select board issues and concerns. You want to kick that one off? Yeah. Um, I've just seen a lot of talk on, on social media, mostly Front Force Forum um, and Facebook about uh, people thinking that the select board should be doing this, should be doing that, um, is not doing certain things that we are, um, you know, certain things about the flood response where people were questioning what we did and didn't do. Um, and so I just think it would be, I think it would behoove the board to have more communication with the public on a regular basis. Um, and so I guess what I'm suggesting is that we empower Tom to um, draft something monthly uh, that we put out that's basically just a, a general communication of what action items we're taking, um, what action items Tom is taking, uh, include the work Randall is working on, um, and just have something that goes out to the public on a regular basis to let them know this is what the select board is doing for you. Um, you know, I, I think, some of the, the past misconceptions aside, uh, you know, we can't really go back and clear up some of the things we may or may not have done on the flood. Um, but we can be more proactive about communicating those things going forward so that there isn't a situation where people are thinking, you know, we, we didn't do something that we actually did do. Um, so that that's kind of just my, my two cents on that. I don't know what others on the board think about having a regular communication like that. I think this is particularly if you do it in a narrative form. Nobody is going to deep dive into the what we're dealing with here. But if you do a summation of the narrative, <clears throat> this last month we uh, we worked on this, 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 and this, um, and not necessarily a direct response to what we're in. <laughs> Um, to to um what you're uh, you know what they're saying like should the select board be digging the river deeper? That was on Trump Board's forum. I don't think you need to respond to that, but I think where Shane has said it is correct. Just mm -hmm. a better and last week I actually had a con conversation with a colleague about this very thing. Um, social media is like changing, and I don't think it's appropriate to interact through social media. But it is turning into our main form of communication, more so than the website even. Um, and so uh, we were just batting around ideas. And one idea was that after every select board meeting, when Donna finishes the minutes, you kind of write it instead of having this like really long detailed document, do just a summary with like the motions and then the future plans, but just like but like pretty quick, pretty bullet point, and then always invite people that to call or email for questions. So it's like a quick narrative. And that, that's something that I was working on just getting started, but it was like a different format. But I, I do think, to Shane's point, that how we communicate with the public is changing over time and changing quite quickly. I just don't think well, after every select board meeting, that's twice a month. I think once a month, we're gonna look, we're gonna load you up with so much stuff. Well, maybe Mike gets his way and we do once a month again, but you know, 
That's true. Yeah, well, no, what you just said is one of my concerns. Load you up. Load you yeah. Up. I I I'm okay with it conceptually. I'm trying to do it, but right now, I don't. In my opinion, Tom is buried, and he's not getting done some of the things that he should be getting done effectively. And I don't want to add one more thing to his list of things to do right now. Me neither. But, but I would like to hear what he's not getting done that should be getting done. Well, I think the best example is like the quality of the packet. In summary, it was like sending it out an hour to the ship. And you're doing it at midnight. On Sunday, yeah, <laughs> that's oh, how yeah. Like, it, it, That's yeah. absolutely yeah. ridiculous. Zero dark thirty. I get that. Uh, you know, you, know, you, gotta, you yeah. should not have to be doing that at midnight on Sunday. It's not nuts. So, so I mean, yeah. I, I agree. I mean, we're also moving into a very busy. There's a lot going on. I think once we get through the the rebuild from the flood, and once we get through past business, it'll get easier. But we're not there. Really. Too long. Um, to uh, try to meet in the middle for an interim period, because I'm hearing two for two against, would it? Oh, break the tire. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, would the board be comfortable for, you know, until we're back downstairs and set up and everything, if the agenda went out on the front porch for them, for the packet, uh, to at least let people know what we're doing? I know it kind of used to Have be about... Open? I guess I, I guess I haven't. I haven't it seen yet. it lately, but it used to be posted used to on the front porch floor yeah. before our board meeting. That's a good compromise, right there. Yeah. Well, well, I like to stick with that. Is that it, it, it's, it's an something. interim interim period solution. Yeah, yeah it, it's something I I don't think it really fills the you know what I think is a need uh, of of more communication. Yeah. But uh, if it's a conversation we can revisit in the future, then I'm I'm okay to have to wait on it. But, but yeah, I do think it's it's something I, I'm just seeing a lot of people who, you know, are are very I, I, I saw, you know, suggestions that we had nothing to do with like the dumpsters in the village during the flood. And you know, that yeah. it was just kind of magically appeared and the town didn't do anything to get dumpsters and et cetera, et cetera. And I know how hard people works to get dumpsters because I was calling you all and you know bugging you yeah. to get dumped and you know so yeah it it so it's frustrating, frustrating as as someone who knows you know from our our very personal experience there what yeah. what we did do um to have the suggestion thrown out that we did so I hear you and I, I think communication is great um uh, I am hearing workload as well yeah. so can yeah. we pick this up is this uh, like an ongoing business narrative, or is this a like flood? Well, I think you know it's resurfaced with the conversation around the library, um, and and you know it has already been brought up. Why aren't they just dredging the river? Um, as if that is you know something in our our toolbox to do. Um, and so, I, I it would be it would be great for us to be more proactive about communicating. We're not dredging the river, but this is what we are. Doing. You know, yeah. we've got things like Holmes Beto that that is an opportunity yeah. for work like that. We have mm -hmm. the the you know potential bio properties that add more opportunity for that. So, yeah, the, there there are things that we could be communicating that you know, if one of us were empowered to communicate them, it would be an improvement in my mind. Um, you volunteer? <laughs> No, I, I would certainly <laughs> ask for help, but I wouldn't, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to speak for the board and not have people be comfortable with it, but, you know, well, it's. You could give all the information that we have and somebody would still complain. Um, so to meet in the middle, are you okay with add this to uh, like the the items that the select board needs to pick back up and your open items list. Yep. Maybe we bring it up in August. Just I'm pulling a number, I'm pulling a month out. Let's let's hope we get uh you know back in order before August. But, uh, ideally, know. yes. Um, put it on the list and at least we'll be able to see it every week, every two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, you had an item under issues and concerns as well. About the car charging station in the park. Yeah, I would like I would like us to um, get to the bottom of that and make it make it a working. 
course. Does anyone know if it doesn't work? I don't know. It was underwater, so I'm guessing it, it probably like, isn't working. I know at one point in time I was picking up it as a FEMA item to look at, and I don't know if you can get that in his list of not only things or not. I can sign this. Do you guys have a preference on the character station item? I'd like to know how much has been used over the years. I don't know if that's metered. I think it is. Well, it is metered. The point is that uh, hopefully it's insured if it was underwater and not working. Because if it's not insured, it's going to cost some money to get that thing up and running. Unless, yeah, FEMA. Theoretically, it would be reimbursed. You know, yeah, it would be at least. Just check it. it, it number one, it's a backwards charger. Right? So it's a, like a three hour charger. I had argued in the first place that put a few extra bucks in and get a half hour charger, but I did not prevail. But I think it's somewhat of an option to try again. I think one of the limiting factors here is the electrical service to it. I, I don't know, but I, I knew back then that. They were half hour chargers that we could have put a few bucks in extra and get something a little bit quicker. The argument was the three hour charger would keep people in the village longer, but really there's not a whole lot to see uh, in three hours. But they could have probably accomplished that in town. And I think, and I, I, I argued that it would be on the list of a quick charger. And that we would get more business if it was a quick charger. Because of the websites, you can go and find out where, where they are all over the country. And I thought it would have been a better approach to for business. But again, I was just wondering. Can you follow up and see if it's functioning so, and if it's on Ron's list for the reimbursement? Did you get a grant for that? Yes. I can't believe we paid for that. We, we had a grant, but I. Suggested that the town put in a few bucks more and get something a little better. Agree. I'm agreeing with you. So, I mean, I had no problem with it. I have to charge it. If I had a band on the select board, then it would have been cool. Yeah. Yeah. All we needed was one more. <laughs> okay. Are we good with that for now? Yes, yeah, we are good. Thank you. All right. Okay. Next item is planned purchases. Oh, I have a couple of items. You had issues issue. and concerns. You didn't bring it up under I did. items. Yeah, I told you I was going to bring some things up under. Under, well, that was yeah, that was changed to the agenda. So this one, I've received a couple of questions about posting election results on the town webpage. Mm -hmm. In okay. light of our conversation, maybe from before tomorrow, it's the right place to do that. And I know we can't uh, tell Rose where to do it because she's the elections officer. But I think we can ask her if she. Can do it or have somebody in the office do it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I actually meant to ask for that as well. Yeah, yeah. there was no contested races. That's true. I, um, I yeah, but I, I think some people told... are even wondering about you know things like the presidential, you know, race, the government, the school board vote, yeah, the school district vote. Yeah, I, I don't know. You've we got. Don't have, we don't have those results. You don't have those no. results. Those you could just put a link to the secretary of state's office. Under elections, people they, they have they, they have on it. Right. They have all that presidential stuff on their site. Yeah. Well, it was brought up to me, and I said I'd mention it. So I don't know what I said. It um, I wanted to find out from Tom, and I know it's a late in the afternoon email. Uh, what the status is of the written decision on the dilapidated buildings here yeah. that we had. Yeah, yeah. I just mainly didn't want to lose track of it. There was a so, yeah. uh, I had a conversation today. Did she called you at all? And, um, we found a representative for Edward and Picture. Uh, and Turk, sorry. Um, Does any of this need to be done in the further discussion? Um, nope, it just means that communication is going to get much smoother and much more efficient. I think. Um, we're going to start seeing some excellent progress moving forward, and that it was uh, simply a great.
there. Well, we still need a decision. We, right. Yeah, we did yep. do a hearing and a decision and all that stuff. So I assume we'll see that at some point. Yes. Okay. And then the third one that I have that probably never got put on your to do list was um, when we did the appointments, we had questions about whether the development review board members had specific terms. And again, it probably never got made its way to you, but we we had uh, you you were supposed to, without knowing about it, um, check into the statute to see if DRB members are required to have specific terms. So right. you could do that. We don't want to lose because we didn't reappoint those people, did we? No, there was the, there was the open question. It was part of the email, but maybe I didn't work it. Didn't you? I guess maybe I misunderstood that. I, to we didn't really do for six minutes. They they had included them on the list. They are on the list. I don't remember specifically not reappointing them specifically, but I remember we talked about. Them. Well, regardless of whether we reappointed them or not, I think we need to find out whether. We need to assign specific terms to them. My recollection is they need a term, um, but I'm not so sure it's something Tom's going to check in for. Can hopefully can check in for. That's my list. That's the list. Yep. Are there any other issues and concerns? Did you get that note, Tom? I'd like to move the thing. Move the. Land purchase price up to like five thousand dollars. Very near talking about. We're talking about that's changing our procurement policy. Yeah, so if you would like that to be on the list, we can add that under other business, but we're not going to do that here tonight. Okay. Other business. Okay. Um, um, you're doing great. Well, it's added to that list. Parking. We you you had another concern thing. Can I just throw in a question? Yeah. Did we ever, did the select board ever get the class four road thing on that? No. no you did? Yeah. No. Two years? No. No, for crying out loud. I thought that had been all done while I was young. You know, Mike, I joined and I was all done how to get it done. And then something happened last year. What was it? A lot. I, I think of Diane over did all the great work we did on class four road. Then we still did the select board to get it done. Well, that's great. They're in good company because we didn't make any changes to the ATV ordinance. Yeah, I know. That should be discussed. Uh, I was going to bring that up, too. We're going to stick that in. Well, those are all great things to bring up during our comments yeah. prioritization meeting, which we're trying to schedule under item 13. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for keeping us on track. Our next item, if there are no other issues and concerns. As planned purchases for consideration, I believe the only request is a set of bed chains at a cost of one thousand two hundred and eight dollars. What is the motion? Oh, oh, bro. Is the motion on the floor? Is there a second? All second. All right. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. I um looking at this, remembered another item um from Duncan's text message this morning for an addition to the There was no official board decision to move the posted sign in the beginning of the at the beginning of the day. And could the board take that action? I would suggest that we could do that in the case report. Yeah. Save the day. Yeah. Um, is Randall available remotely? Because he is our next item. I am. Hello. How are you? I can hear. I'm pretty good. Are you all able to hear me? I can hear you. Loud and clear. Rosemary. Okay. Skipped over you. <laughs> you want to go back to Rosemary? Oh, no, you're good. <clears throat> oh, okay. see. There's no bullets. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to do like I did the last 
few meetings. I'm just going to kind of run through some things that have been happening, update you on things that I've mentioned uh, before. Uh, first and foremost, uh, folks from EDA contacted myself and someone from LCPC and said that they wanted to have a conversation with us uh, regarding matters related to the industrial park. Uh, we had a meeting with them and they wanted us to be aware of um, the possibility of pursuing a design only grant for the new wastewater facility. Obviously, because uh, nothing in particular has been settled on that matter. And because it mostly, this is something that really falls within the village's purview in, in a lot of ways. Uh, we just kind of went through that kind of conversation with them and they made us aware of what the possibility was. And so I'm just flagging it for the select board's attention to again, consider the various kinds of conversations that are going to have to happen should you all decide that you want to uh, entertain the idea of relocating the wastewater facility uh, and to just think about how to have that conversation and or to make the village aware of the fact that there is this potential um, potential funding anyway for the design aspect of the wastewater facility. So I'll just kind of put that out there on your radar. Um, secondarily, um, we I think I mentioned before that we were awaiting a revised uh, environmental review proposal from Mumley Engineering. Uh, the first one they presented to us uh, was sort of reviewed by Pat Ripley and LCPC. And there are a lot of items that were kind of flagged as being omitted or not clearly delineated who would be handling us. And, and at the time that they gave us the initial proposal, it was not a not to exceed cost proposal. And so LCPC was pretty emphatic that a not to exceed proposal would be better. And obviously from select board perspective, a not to exceed proposal is great because, you know, they're telling you this is what it, you know, will not exceed. Uh, and it makes it, you know, the the cost structure much clearer. I think, again, Mumley just has a predisposition to trying to be as on point as humanly possible with what something costs. And so they they don't necessarily account for all the things that can go wrong uh, and include those because it, it makes it seem like maybe their proposal is bloated, you know, and they don't want to do that. But I think it's a lot better uh, if we just have clarity about all the things that could happen that could increase costs. Uh, the only other thing related to that is um, tomorrow, actually, the, there's some folks from ACCD, the Historic Preservation and Archaeology folks, are going to meet me uh, at the Jewett property to walk that property. They're going to do an initial consultation to uh, just review whether there might be some matters of historical or archaeological significance. You know, this is just part of the thing that they do. Nobody's expecting them to find anything, but you never know. Um, so we'll be doing that tomorrow. Uh, some better news, or I guess that wasn't bad news, but some positive news. Uh, I, you all are aware that I uh, applied for a VORAC grant uh, and recently. Uh, it was approved. We we are going. We was approved in the full amount that was requested, which is twenty seven thousand seven hundred dollars. Uh, that. That proposal was for a scoping study to connect the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail to the village center. Um, and so right now we're sort of in the process of waiting for a grant agreement to come through to review. And then at some point it'll be obviously in front of you all to decide whether to accept or not. It's a reimbursement grant with no match. Um, and so that's good. Uh, also, if you recall, there was a whole thing about various community groups applying, wanting to apply for the same grant. And uh, so I found a, another funding source for one of those community groups that that is the Arboretum. Uh, I applied for a grant for them to get funding to do the improvements that they wanted at the Arboretum. That has also been approved, uh, which is great. Uh, that was uh, that was a national association of the National Board of Realtors placemaking grant, and it's sort of passed down through the Lamoille area uh, realtors. And they're going to be sort of working with me and the folks from the Arboretum 
And uh, again, that's also a reimbursement grant. That's about $7,300, but it also has no match. Um, and another thing I just found out today about it, which is kind of cool, is that the realtors want to be involved as volunteers. You know, folks from their association are going to volunteer and help. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's just some park benches and picnic tables, and there's going to be an installation of a handrail to make the entrance a little more friendly. It's already ADA compliant, it's my understanding, but to put the handrail in there and make it a little easier. Anyway, the realtors will mobilize some of their own to kind of help the our existing Arboretum volunteers to get that stuff in there. We don't have all the details worked out, but anyway, that's another little piece. Uh, this is a, another thing related to the Green Mountain Byway. Uh, Rosemary pointed out to me the other day that there were these four signs, uh, Green Mountain Byway road signs in the office. And she was like, what are these for? So I asked, uh, it's supposed to be placed, you know, every community in the Green Mountain Byway sort of area has these signs along their roadway. We don't have ours installed. And so my first question is, uh, who do you, I mean, I'm happy to manage whatever process needs to be, but who do you, who do you want to make the decision about where those signs go? Or who do you want to be involved in that decision in terms of where the signs go? And then um, after that, I, I'll just be needing to apply for a, a, a 1111 permit from Vermont AOT. Some of you may already be familiar with that, but uh, so I just need somebody to decide who decides or a decision about where the four byway signs go that just basically they're just you know standard size roadway signs that indicate you're currently on the green mountain byway that's it uh, yeah one of the board's wishes with that request uh that would be jason and tom that would make that decision right i'm not sure yeah, it is Route 15 is it uh -huh. Does it have to be on Route 15? Yeah, and if it's Route 15, it's a B trans decision mm -hmm. where they go. We can make suggestions or recommendations, but it requires yeah. a, a, a specific permit approval under. I mean, it, it's the. Uh, well, is that not the one that Randall was saying? Yeah, one, 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 one. No, it's no. not. Um, there's a separate statute called the uh, uh, billboard. No state from Vermont that deals with roadside signs, um, and I don't. It may it may be under a section eleven. You know, right there. Would be the permit the decision, and then uh, there's a whole team of towns that have already worked on this. I'm sure it's been figured out. Yeah. Uh, like next, could you reach out to Trish in Morrisville and maybe see if? Well, right. Something? She's the one that told me that 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 the the one 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 permit was what I would be needing to have those signs installed well, in it. And that the other communities had done it and that it was a relatively pain-free process. Morristown is a little bit different because uh it's not a it's class one town highway through Morristown. This is not a town highway at all. This is Vermont 15. So I would delegate Tom and Randall to find out who they need to talk to. Yeah, get it done. Yeah, make suggestions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I will do it. I will yeah. keep it off of Tom's plate. <laughs> if unless unless you want me to put it on your plate, Tom, I will take it off your plate. Your plate is all yours. All right. Okay. Good. Um. Okay, and, uh, coordinate with Jason on where you where he thinks good spots for it to be. You know, he's the road. Yeah, but he's not on fifteen. He's got fifteen. Yeah, yeah no, he's that shit. Yeah, cut Randall loose to do it. The consensus. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah. Continue, Randall. It's all okay. here. And then uh, in an email to you all, I mentioned that there were these two upcoming conferences for you to consider. Again, uh, it's, it's obviously uh, up to you all whether you think it's worth uh, my time and the money to attend. There's the Vermont Tourism Summit in May. I gave you the pricing information on that in an email. Um, I had a little conversation with Duncan where he was inquiring, you know, wanting to know a little bit more about it. And uh, I didn't say it in the email, but I just, in response to the you know conversation with him, I said, well, part of my job description, you know, one of the bulleted items in the job description deals with tourism and marketing. 
And that's an area that I am not, that's not a strength of mine. It's not something I have in my background uh, particularly. And so that's just why it sort of was, it came to my attention. I was just like, I don't know, maybe this is a thing that makes sense for me to attend. There's going to be people from all over the state, private entities, chambers of commerce, you know, the Department of Tourism Marketing from the state will be there, et cetera. Uh, it's for you all to consider. Uh, I, I'm not coming to you emphatically saying that I know 100% that this is a thing that is of immense value, uh, you know, because I just don't know. I've never been to it. I don't know enough about it other than the folks who are there and sort of the examples of some of the themes that I had said, you know, will be talked about there. And, you know, one of which was like sports tourism across the Green Mountains, Vermont's creative economy, driving tourism and building Vermont. Uh, there's a thing there about making uh, trails accessible and making people awareness of the accessibility of trails, et cetera. So again, um, that's for you to consider. And I put it in the context of, because it wasn't clear in my email, at least to Duncan and maybe for the rest of you, there's a conference later in the summer in June, the historic preservation and historic uh, downtown and preservation conference that I have attended. I, when I was working at ACCD, I was there sort of representative to that conference. And I can say with that one for sure, because I've attended that I believe it's of significant value. And it's followed the next day by the Vermont Creative Network convening, which is a creative economy network of folks from all over the state, sort of organized by the Vermont Arts Council that deals with how to how to tie in the creative economy to grow at municipalities in the state level. That one's in June. And so I, I was clarifying to Duncan, you know, if it was a matter of one or the other, I can say for sure that the other you know, the latter one is of value, I believe. Again, you might decide it's not, that's fine. Um, and if it's if it's not a matter of one or the other, that's sort of, I guess, what I'm asking you to consider. Or you might say, you know, it's neither or both or whatever you decide. Board's wishes. Well, I would like you to be well-educated. So I, I'm in favor of you certainly attending the one in June. And what's the number? Do we do we do you have a sense what it is a couple thousand dollars to go to the earlier one? Uh, no, it's well, God, I would hope not. There's you know, it's the mileage reimbursement, which would be 246 miles. Uh, then there's the conference for two days, which is 400, and then there's the um, the hotel is 179 a night plus tax. But there is an option to go for just one day as well. There's which is uh, two twenty five. So, any of you have a preference? Uh, You're gonna go for one or two days? Uh, well, um, I don't know at this point exactly how the comp how the um, how the various. Uh, like breakout sessions or whatever are broken across the two days. So I don't know if there's like one really good one on one day and one really good one on the next day or whatever. But, um, you know, I mean, one of the key things about those, which is the, you know, some people think it's pointless schmoozing. Uh, it depends on how you look at it or it's networking. And the, you know, the longer you're there, the more people you're able to kind of meet and talk to and get ideas from. But um, again, I think if today you should go for it. Yeah, I agree. I say let's let's send them. I'm a believer in education, and I like the idea of working on creative economy. Yeah. Let's I think, yeah. Well, the so I was going to ask uh, Randall, which one when it comes to the idea of the the creative economy, which one do you think you would get more value out of? Because that is definitely something I think we could tap here in Johnson. Yeah, no, the creative economy one. Um, you know. The one in June is entirely focused. You know, there's a day that's entirely focused on that. Um, but that one also, I don't think is that expensive. It doesn't, you know, because the the one in at Mount Snow is uh, because it has so many like corporate entities. I think the prices, you know, tend to kind of get elevated a little in those situations. The Downtown Preservation Conference, I don't recall what it cost, but I don't think it was in the neighborhood of $400. And it's only one day, so I doubt very much it's that much. Uh, it's in Bellows Falls. Um, and then the con creative convening, again, I don't think it's anywhere near that much money. So, like, in my mind, it would be good 
if you decide the first one's good, it would definitely be good to go to both just because, uh, you know, the first one also doesn't just cover creative economy stuff. It covers, like I said, sports marketing, trail stuff, tourism, things that aren't going to be covered in the other piece. So, um, I'm with Shane. I'm supportive of you going to both of them. I'm with it. We um, <clears throat> ask Randall to attend both of these and he reimburse the appropriate expenses. The, the one caveat, I mean, I don't want to direct the board. One caveat for the second one, I would just say, because I don't know the pricing information, you know, pending pricing information on the second one, just to, you know, cover you all and just, because who knows, maybe it's some insane amount of money, but I don't think it is. Did your motion, would your motion to cover both? Yes, to cover both conferences. You should not be in sales on them. Trying to send you to both these things <laughs> and to shoot you down. Um, I'll second. Yeah, that's sending the button. It's going to be re reasonable. So there's a motion on the floor. It's about to put sending Randall to the. Uh, Vermont Tourism Summit yeah. and the event June 5th and 6th. Yeah. Downtown Historic uh, Preservation Complex, followed by the Vermont Creative Network. Part of that motion was that we would cover the appropriate expenses. No limit. No alcohol. Mic check. No alcohol. Uh, any further discussion? I don't like approving anything. Duncan? Uh, I would be happier to, to use a not to succeed figure. Um, make, a, make an amendment. Or pull make it it. Well, since we don't know what the cost is on the second one, that's going to be harder, but we do know that we could, we could find $400 for the conference, Plus lodging for the first one. In, in my do we think fifteen hundred? The good we just do a couple thousand for both of them. It's not for both. Of them. Why don't we approve the one we know about and then wait for the next meeting? So there's a proposed amendment. To cover four hundred dollars plus one seventy nine a night, budget mileage. Yeah. mileage. That would have to be amended by you and you, friendly. And if it's, or else just propose it. And well, Duncan can propose it, but you were the motion, or you were the second. You guys were. The I'd be friendly to fifteen hundred dollar, not to exceed or something like that for both I, events. Uh, or for this event. Randall, do you think 1500 would be enough to do both events? Uh, just um, based on past uh, numbers for this uh, historical preservation conference? I, I would think so. And like, yeah, if it does, like I can come back before you. And I mean, not, not that it will. If it looks like it's going to, I can come before you beforehand and say, yeah, actually, it's going to be way this, this much and reconsider or not. But I, I don't I don't I don't see how it would exceed that now. That $1,500, I'm peaceful. Okay, so the motion and the seconder have accepted an amount not to exceed $1,500. You made that correct, right? Yes. yes. And that's for both events total. Yes. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. I think we're going to need to do a roll call because I don't know how you hold it really. Mark? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Duncan wants an aye. All right, you were an I. Hey. Mike was an A. You guys have it. Okay, Randall. Well, right. we, well, we've got him on, Kevin. I had a couple of items related to discussions that he was talking about. Certainly. He has one more action item request, yeah. but if you want. Okay, to. no, that's fine. I just wanted to get through that one other action item. Sure. If you're okay with that, you're okay with that, Randall? Uh, yeah, I'd have one other update and then the action item with the flood recovery plan. Is that what you're referring to? No, it was uh, EDA and the light industrial. 
No, I mean the additional action item that Evan is referring to. Uh, well, you're saying the select board needs to approve a signed letter of support for the BCRD. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one I'm I, yeah. I'm going to get to after this one last little update that's not an action item, which is to update you on the Vermont Community Foundation uh, and their activity in in Johnson, essentially, which is that um, uh, some of you are aware. I've had conversations with a couple of you. Uh, the Vermont Community Foundation is ready to, um, you know, essentially deposit twenty thousand dollars on behalf of the Rail Trail Committee uh, with the town, with the understanding that the money kind of can function in two different ways. Because you know, as you, if you recall, you uh, approved me applying for uh, an AARP grant to some uh, improvements in the Village Center, and so basically the thought process with VCF was. Uh, if you, if you don't get this grant, here's the money that will cover what was being asked for in the grant. If you do get the grant, here's money that can enhance what you were applying for with, with the grant that you left out of the grant, because it was going to exceed the amount that was realistically available with the grant. So that's, um, uh, one piece. Uh, they also said that they will be, uh, sending $10,000 uh, sort of for use by the library. Uh, it's flexible use as far as I understand. I wasn't privy to those conversations, but the, the woman from VCF said that they were intending to do that as well. Uh, she also said that they were uh, going to be um, contributing 3300 bucks for the skate park because in conversations with them, there was a shortfall uh, with insurance covering some tools that were lost in the flood. Uh, and so the 3,300 would make that whole. Um, and then they didn't give me a dollar amount because it's not through the town or village, but they are also giving money to Vermont uh, Studio Center in support of a pollinator garden that they're going to be placing right there and their property that abuts the river there off of School Street. And they're doing some river plain uh, floodplain restoration work there so that money is going to kind of go to support that um and then there's other there's still conversations being had with other groups in johnson for supporting that and then the larger board um not sure is aware or not but there's also a larger chunk of money uh a fairly substantial sum that they're also kind of holding back to um also contribute in the town, but they were waiting for potentially the identification of maybe a larger project because these are all sort of smaller bits and pieces and they were looking at maybe something bigger that the town might identify and that sort of segues into uh, this flood recovery plan, because if you were all if you were to decide to support this long term community flood recovery plan, the process that generates you know that that generates in the terms of identifying community priorities identifying projects to be undertaken and to complete if if the town undertook that process that would be a perfect way to sort of say hey here's this chunk of money you went through this whole process you were very diligent about identifying what the various uh desires were in the town and you identified them and so it would just be, be an easy way for them to just say, yeah, we feel very confident that this is like a, you know, the highest and best use of the dollars in the town. So having said all that, I sent you all an email uh, a while back, uh, just saying that, you know, Tom had set up a meeting with folks uh, from Senator Welch's office. Uh, Rebecca Ellis works for the Senator and he, she was, uh, involved in the flood recovery in Waterbury post Irene. And so we were having this conversation about their flood recovery process, the plan that they put together sort of at the behest and direct and so, to some degree, the direction of FEMA and the process they went through and the value of it, or, you know, not, they, they believed it had great value. And, uh, and so I was just sort of relaying that to you in this email. And one of the possibilities for initiating that, that process, as I mentioned was potentially using this uh, uh, Vermont Council on Rural Development program that I applied for that we were accepted to participate in. And we've had conversations with them to some degree and just thought, well, 
what they're able to do is kind of initiate the process. They don't go as in depth as the sort of larger flood recovery planning would be, but it'd be a really great kind of like first step to kind of getting us there. And uh, as you're aware, Jessica Savage is here from VCRD and she can um, she can speak to a little bit about like what that program is that we've been accepted to and what they're capable of doing, but also kind of giving you some insight into how it fits in with this notion of maybe doing a flood recovery plan. So Jessica, do you wanna go or do you guys have questions before that or how do you wanna proceed? I know you had some questions, Duncan. Oh, we can finish that. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. 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 Hi, I'm I'm Jessica Savage. I work for the Vermont Council on Rural Development, as Randall mentioned, VCRD. Um, I'm here representing our uh, staff generally, and specifically the Resilient Communities Program that Randall applied to. Um, but I think I think you guys know who VCRD is, but we provide uh, neutral facilitation um, as an actively nonpartisan nonprofit to communities around the state. Um, Specifically with what I understand that Johnson is looking for, we can, uh, as Randall says, sort of initiate this flood recovery and discussion around uh, projects, initiatives, goals uh, that you might be identifying as a community. Um, we can also help you start thinking about what resilience might look like as well. Um, and this year, what's what's interesting is that we have additional support available for communities like Johnson through um, a couple of different sources. So we can potentially take you a little bit further, either with us or with um, additional consultant uh, time. And uh, what else can I tell you about this this process? Where um, you know, it, this is a process that doesn't cost you anything, first of all. Uh, second of all, it's directed by the, the town and the village. Um, we would put together a steering committee to help decide and design this process. Um, unlike our community visit program, we really work with communities, um, especially since flooding happened, to design something that fits where the town is at this particular moment. Um, we worked with Barry pretty quickly after the flood. So that was a little bit different, right? People were still, you know, reeling uh, from what had just happened. Um, we would we would want to work uh, at the direction of the steering committee to design a process that really fit what was needed right now. Um, so that's a little bit about what we're thinking. Um, and I'm happy to take any questions that you might have. Any questions? Um, you said um, that it was to um, help design where the town is now. Did you mean where we physically are now or where we are in this process? Because part of me thinks that maybe we want to move some of the town out of the flood zone, like this building. I guess what I meant was uh, I would want the steering committee to, to sort of read the room of the town as it is in terms of like what does your community need because the process that we really do is community engagement right so you'd be inviting the public residents of johnson uh to come together and think about what the goals are and the priorities and the and the projects so um i think you know you know best where your neighbors are at in terms of um what they need to come together to to discuss and how to set the right tone so that we're really successful in getting people through a process of thinking about recovery and and projects. Does that make sense? I wasn't speaking sort of physically about the town. I meant more the mood of the town. Thank you. So I, I've got one. How how far along the path would that be to getting us to a so-called flood recovery plan? Or are they two different animals that we're talking about here? Randall, do you wanna take this one? 
Yeah, I would say, you know, in Tom and I's conversation, it's and, and in looking at the documents, it looked like um, it looked like Waterbury's sort of planning process. I don't know if it was in, in terms of the the, you know, the actual writing of the plan, but the process for sort of dealing with and identifying and engaging the community, I think it took place over five months at least. Uh, I, you know, VCRD and Barry, I think you all um, had a more limited scope. I think you had, you know, like basically two convenings or something like that. And I think that this other process would be more involved. But this is sort of the first piece. Uh, I think, I, you know, I mentioned in the email that Sam Young, who came before the board not too long ago from, from FEMA, I had a phone conversation with him. He said that he would, uh, you know, he would be able to, that FEMA would be able to contribute uh, technical resources in terms of it, in terms of this planning process. Um, you know, he thought that they would be able to actually write the plan. They would have the staff time to kind of take all of the material that was generated and turn it into, you know, the document that would be the guiding document down the road, but would be able to uh, integrate with the work that VCRD did, you know, said that he would be you know, present at all, at all meetings, if at all possible for everything himself to kind of help lead this process along. But it would kind of be a, it would be a little bit of trying to kind of manage a little, a few disparate parts to pull them together to create this one thing, since there's not a specific one entity that would do the whole thing, but it seems like it could work fairly seamlessly. And um, I should mention then, because we were talking about Vermont Community Foundation, I've also talked with them. They may also be able to provide resources for uh, a consultant uh, who could take over what VCRD did and carry it through. And again, that would be at no cost to the town. VCRD, I mean, excuse me, VCF, Vermont Community Foundation would be able to potentially fund that. Again, VCRD is maybe having internal discussions because one of the things that VCF said was that they could potentially fund what VCRD does to extend it, but you can have money, but you may not have staff time. So VCRD may not have the staff capacity. Either way, um, this would probably only get us at the initial sort of laying the groundwork piece, and then we'd have to have something else, someone else or some combination of others to kind of carry it forward. I like three. <laughs> I and, and I'll just say one part of this process, just to make you all aware, is we always work a with the community and and for the all the people of the community, but we bring with us a resource team, both of local uh, experts and statewide experts, to ensure exactly what you're talking about that there is a really good place for things to land. So. Um, and I will just mention, though we only did two public convenings with Barry, we met with them many, many times to really shape that the materials and, and what they needed was what what they got in the report, um, because they specifically wanted to set the work up for their long term recovery group. Here, it sounds like what you really want is a long term recovery plan. Um, and we're we we would partner with you to figure out who needs to be present to ensure that continuity of all the action steps that would need to happen, even if, like Randall saying, uh, our staff capacity limits us to participate in every single one of those steps. But um, this is this is kind of what we do is work with a community to design the full process and then figure out how best to, to make sure that it, it can happen. And the other thing I would just say is, you know, having this conversation, even if you, even if the board just decides like, well, we may not, it, maybe it sounds too much, maybe it sounds too complicated. We're not really sure what the value is with this larger plan. Again, the resource is already here for this smaller piece. So if that's what you all end up deciding, like, well, we, oh, there's too many unknowns with the rest of it. You know, we still have this available to us that we can do. We can use that. And maybe you, maybe the board decides that's enough. Um, but again, there's no, there's no financial commitment, you know, on the town's part. Well, a draft letter of intent put on packet page number five. What are the board's wishes? I would move to authorize the chair to sign the 
draft letter. Second. Can I make a friendly amendment? Sure. Right. Tom needs to like, or Randall needs to put Thomas Johnson and then can we just have Tom sign it? Uh, I can come in and do it yep. tomorrow night, but it's just a quicker process. Yeah, no Put it on letterhead and fill in the blank. Yeah. Do okay, you, uh, do you want me to dress it up, Randall, or do you want to dress it up? Uh, I don't actually have town letterhead. Uh, so you can either send it to me or whatever, you know, but, but by the time you send it to me, you could just do it okay. either way, whatever you want. We have a motion in a second. You guys can handle that. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. You had a couple other items for Randall? I did. So some of this is just even taking a little bit of a step back and it's, it's specifically with regard to the light industrial commercial park the eda grant the nbrc grant randall was working very closely with Beth on all of those issues and with beth getting off the board beth kind of asked me and i just you know i sort of talked about um, me being the contact with randall on that but i feel that really should be something that the board talks about and is comfortable with. Um, so that's sort of the first question is, or, is the board comfortable with being sort of being the ways on the ground? Yeah, I'm curious. Do we need a motion? I think you have consensus. I'm not seeing any hesitancy. There's um, nobody better on the board handle big work. No. <laughs> Thanks a lot. What, what we may need a motion for, though, is I, I believe we had authorized Beth to sign all paperwork related to this grant project, so we may need a motion for that. And I think as paperwork needs to be signed, we'll probably come in. If anything's immensely quick, I'm fine with that. All right. You want I'll to make a motion, motion to authorize Duncan to sign uh, any paperwork for the NDRC grant and the EDA grant? Motion on the floor. Is there a second? Sorry. Motion a second. Any further discussion? Does that involve town funding? I don't envision it actually uh, that's part of my next conversation I don't think and Randall can chime in I don't think the EDA grant is going to happen <clears throat> um, and I certainly would not want to do anything with regard to planning design planning for a wastewater treatment facility in the industrial park. To me, that's a village issue. I want nothing to do with that. Not, I don't mean that the way it came out. Uh, it's, 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 it's nothing that the select board or the town should be involved in. If, if that process is gonna happen, that should be something that the village is being in our realms. And that would totally be, I mean, Randall is working for us, not the village. So sure. that's something they would have to totally pursue on their own their Absolutely. Yeah, unless they want to pay for some of Randall's time. Sure. That would be my opinion. Clearly, they don't <laughs> want to. So clearly. So, so, um, so non monetary items is your request. That's all. Yeah. Um, and with that discussion, I, are you fine? I'm, yeah. I'm good. I'm good. All right. Yeah. Any further discussion? All those in favor of signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed. And then the um, on the same subject, um, Randall has set up a meeting, uh, a phone conversation, Zoom meeting with um, Vermont Community Development, the ACCD, um, who was the original grantor of the funds for the Sterling Market project back in 2011, um, which ultimately resulted in the town having a revolving loan bond um, in the amount of $280,000, something like that. Um, <clears throat> since, since I suspect that the EDA grant is not going to be approved and the Northern Borders Regional Commission grant has been approved. That leaves us at 
a grant funding of 50% of the total estimated budget funds, which obviously leaves us with a 50% uh, makeup for that. So I would like to see, take the temperature of the board on two things. One, I would like Randall to um, at least investigate what the options are through the Vermont Bond Bank um, for bonding for some of that shortfall. Um, I'd like to have a discussion with ACCD on the town borrowing money from the revolving loan fund and perhaps zero percent interest. Um, and I'd also like to ask and authorize Randall to look into any and all other potential funding sources to make up the 50 percent down share What's the total of that? 800 something. No, what, what's the 50 percent? Oh, uh, that's 50%. Curse. No, I knew you were going to ask me that. Um, I think we have a three hundred and thirty thousand dollars shortfall. That's right. Is that after our budget? That's after yeah. our. That's what I was. That is around the or something. Yeah. Um, I remember in the proposal. It's been a while since we've seen it at this point, but um, there was also some amount made up through in kind. Uh, Work that uh, you know labor provided by town employees. Is Did that the RC well? grant? Yeah, I believe so. I might be wrong about that. But. It was some, um, yeah. but but their total project costs I think were in the vicinity of one point seven, one point eight million dollars. Right. Yeah. From construction costs, um, of which they are committed to pay fifty percent. And I should remind the board that we voted as a board to submit the yeah. application with. The understanding that if we were to go for it, that we would go to the voters and ask them to approve for it. So I think at least the prior board made a commitment. What, wasn't, <laughs> wasn't there a promise years ago that this was going to be funded all by grants and not any cost to the taxpayer? No, there never was such a promise. I don't think any. Previous board can make a promise. Well, wasn't they a, the kind of a uh, maybe not quite overtly spoken, but there was a you know, general consensus that there was not going to be any extra cost to the taxpayers? My understanding to um, address what Duncan was that we didn't. Decide. We didn't decide to go for the grant, knowing that we were going to go ask the voters to approve the bond. It was if we are unable to find other revenue sources, this is kind of the last resort. And I, you know, I for me that is the last resort. I would love for us to ask Randall to find other revenue sources, um, but that's that's the fallback if we. And, and I think that it is something that, you know, if we come to that point, we can absolutely make a good argument for why the voters should fund something like that. Um, but my ideal scenario is that we find other ways to pay for it. Well, there is right now a Bernie, Senator Bernie Sanders, and, and I believe Randall is on a webinar Thursday, is it? Or is it tomorrow? Uh, I believe it's tomorrow at one. Yeah, so he's looking for ideas for congressionally, what do they call it? Directed we used to call them earmarks, but congressionally yeah. designated. Directed spending. You mean directed pork. Spending. Yeah, pork. we used yeah. to call them earmarks. I, I like bacon. Call. So, so to try to keep this more direct, Duncan had three requests. What is the temperature of the board on those requests? I think the third one was empowering Randall to go out and look for more money. Yeah. I am very much with you on that. Um, what were the other two? The other two specifically was um, to check with the Vermont Bond Bank to get some idea to report back to the board uh, on what it would look like to bond with the yeah. bond bank. And the third was to investigate the options for ACC borrowing right. borrowing from our from ourselves for the yeah. So this is really all I just on all that information related to what will different financial financial scenarios look like. 
then can we have Randall seek other funding? Absolutely. And, and my purpose in doing this was, I think, in the past, Randall was working directly with Beth. Mm -hmm. I would like there to be, you know, yeah. more transparency, I guess, yeah. understood in the process with the full uh, board. What are the board's thoughts on that? Well, that's why this whole project has taken so long from the first uh, inception of in the town vote, because we've been trying to fund it with no cost to the town. I think to, we need to continue with that approach. So there is no cost. Now what, okay. Is your town in your Not yet. Yeah. So what would your personal feelings on no cost be? Because if, I'm throwing a scenario out there, and I don't know if it's even possible. If the town needed to take out a loan for, say, $330,000, and we sold the lots for $330,000, that would be net zero, right? Right. Okay, so so you would be supportive of knowing what scenarios look like? Yes. Okay. But the thing is, I, I'm still going to stick with uh, no cost of tax Gotcha. But the, the other thing I'll bring up is uh, Randall just mentioned that um, the Vermont Community Foundation is looking for a bigger project to fund in town. And I don't know how big they're thinking, um, but, you know, maybe they can help out. You know, um, this is this is certainly a bigger project for us. So temperature, checking on those things, you're fine with it. Yeah, Mark. I'm I'm fine. I'm okay. I I still think it's cost of the town. We're we're taking half of money. Yeah. I lost that vote on it and I admit to it. To put towards this, which is money we could have done out of the things with. If the, if this project and then meanwhile I'm here in the sewage treatment plant, may want to relocate there, which makes it a much more of an interesting discussion, you know. Um, because that is certainly isn't the intent of why it was built. Um, so we, I would like some clarity on that. But for these three things, Evan, I'm fine. We, more information. Than I'm sure. supportive on the table. Obviously, I'm not going to. Right. I, I, I don't want to walk. I think we got those three items. Yep. That was okay. the temperature I got. You're the man. Okay. Anything else? I don't think so. Is there anything else you can think of that we should be bringing the board up to speed on with regard to? Funding opportunities or anything related to the industrial park? Maybe no, the I would just say though that the, the 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 issue that Shane raised, not directly but indirectly, is this: seeking other funding sources is challenging if you are expecting one to not have any match. That's that's you're eliminating a wide, wide, wide gamut of funding sources because they're going to want to match. Secondly, the timeline at which those various funding streams operate, including congressionally directed spending, don't necessarily align with the new kind of ticking clock that we have having received and signed an NBRC grant agreement. So I'm just saying to the board to be realistic in your expectation about finding a funding program one that fits and two that will work at the timeline to get money here into you know into johnson in time to meet the requirements for the nbrc grant i'm not sure that that's a realistic expectation having said that vermont community foundation is a very different animal because they're not a you know they're not a federal government or state government program so they can move you know they can just write checks and make things happen so anyway that that that's i would just put that out there Good reality check. Yeah. If they want to write Thank a check you. for three hundred thirty thousand dollars. The town of Johnson. Wonderful. Right. Uh, if you don't have anything else, Randall, we are running a little bit behind. I'm not trying to shortchange anything, but if we're good, I'm no, that's almost... it. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Thank, for your thank, thank you for the grant work. You brought. Thank you. Pulled in a pile of money. For yes. Us. Thank yeah. you very much. You're paying your salary. Um, Rosemary, the floor is yours. Why don't you go to the next? Can you come back to me. You want to be pushed down yep. farther? Yep. You want to stay longer with us? Thank you. <laughs> Until the other people would like to leave. Okay. So you're proposing that we shift the library grant update up. That's my assumption. Yeah. Well, 
Tom, what's the update on the library grant? <clears throat> and then we do have some members in our packed municipal building tonight that you can't see online. <laughs> I'm sure I would love to if see. They start them. speaking, the owl will see them. Yeah, yeah, they're okay. yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. <clears throat> oh, you can. They're just a wide group. People out there. Tom, what's the update? Uh, on Tuesday, Gene submitted the grant for the library, which, uh, which discussed several options, but the main option being relocating to the Lincoln Field um, for a total cost of $1.585 million. Um, the new construction at 1.42 million, um, which makes saving the historic structure seem really like a great option. So that's how it's in the hands of the Department of Libraries with um, basically late May, early summer for a determination date. And this is the first round of two options, although I, if we don't get it, I'm not sure we can wait for the second option in the fall. I think we'd have to move forward with FEMA. Um, to put the library back together. Um, one of the caveats that I was discussing today was if we, uh, with our payment proposal, is if, if we choose to move forward with relocating the building, there is FEMA funding available to assist us in that move. Um, the catch with that is that we can't do anything until we move the building, which means we can't put the library back together until after it's moved. So this is an interesting conundrum where there's an option we can start the process to move forward. FEMA has different arms, right? One of them is mitigation. We chose to look at flood proof in the basement and elevating the heat pumps or changing the heat system to being a more resilient structure in place. Um, the Department of Library grants kind of threw everything for a mix. And I think getting out of the floodplain is probably one of the best ideas I've ever heard. Um, and this makes it possible. With that, we're short eighty-five thousand dollars in funding. If we don't, or we don't even know how much they might not award the whole one point five. Um, and so, if we choose to use FEMA funding, if we can use, they're both federal funding, so we have to make sure that they're not competing and that we can combine. Um, and if we can combine FEMA with the Department of Libraries, um, we can't do any work on the inside until after the building moves, which means this project would have to move forward like ASAP in the summer. Um, which So we put the project timeline to start April 15th um, with architectural work and hopefully have it um, with a completion date of uh, 1231. So the library will be in, relocated a new addition and open to the public on January. It's a conceptual idea. Um, and I think if we work with FEMA for that additional funding to help offset those costs, um, that's really the fastest timeline. We, we, have, we would have to move forward as fast as we can if we're going to build off putting the inside back together. Okay. But Is there anything you'd like to add, Gene? Or just tell them about it? We're good. Okay. All right. So the updates, the applications out there, we're going to be able to move forward this summer. Is there? Okay. I know that with the FEMA, the way we set it up, we did the combined construction mitigation piece. My understanding there it is going to be a round of FEMA mitigation grants coming up. Would we be eligible for the FEMA? That's been that's a process. So this is all brand brand new. Like this was a conversation earlier today. Um, and so I think what we need to do is better understand there. So there's like pre-flood conditions that is putting the building back. And there's like the second half is mitigation. And now there's like maybe a different option for the second half and that's relocation. Um, and it, it is in the best interest of FEMA and it's to, they want to set you up so they never have to come back again. So they'll be most supportive to get us out of the floodplain rather than to rely on flood proofing. But it's just, there's a, that caveat of delaying progress. And, and I think if it's, a, we need to spend some time into that grant, the human mitigation grant, because is that tied to our damage or is that a totally separate project? So then we can put the building back, do no mitigation, and then use a separate human mitigation grant to piggyback on the Department of Libraries ARPA funding. 
to get us to where we need to go. It, it's complicated, and I, I think we just need those very clear, precise, we need precise answers on this before we move forward. So I'm assuming you'll work with uh, the library. Of course, yeah. Since the answer, yeah. Jeans on speed dial these days. <laughs> yeah. Do any other board members have any questions? Yeah. Howard. Yeah. I just want to be clear about something you're talking about, not putting an option to field next to it. Uh, right now, the only, I mean, there's all six options were sent to the Department of Libraries. Um, your map was awesome. Thank you. That was that was a, a great depiction of like that, that we're working through this. I think the issue is there's all of the six. I think only one for sure is out of the 500 year floodplain. And if we were to put in an eight foot basement for the potential growth of going from a 1600 foot library to 30, 3200 square foot library, um, we need we would need that. 500 year floodplain guarantee, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to fill a bathtub ever, you know, we're going to have a full basement. No, no, so I'm curious. My question is, do you put the library on the site of the old yellow house? We don't own that spot. Oh, um, you're thinking about Legion Field? Really? And the spot that we don't own also has a portion of it within the 500 year floodplain. Up front. Yeah. Put it up on up against the back, back. bank there. Yeah. It's it's cool. on the you do have a site there. That it actually be a, so, a great place for. And and it's on it's on the grant to be considered. I think step one is getting um and we have the support of the supervisory union to be in that area. And nothing's off the table. You know, even even well, elevating in place is is on the table. Um but I think at this point, you know, once the grant is awarded, and if we are awarded on um, the amount, we would we can't rely on a you know a computer generated map. We're going to have to get elevation certification, of course. And I think from way. from that we can further that discussion. I think everybody agrees that where the alumni house was is probably more out of the way of the activities of the town, but it's just that 500 year mark and getting that elevation certification. Um, and the other alternative was again the far opposite side, the left side, as far out as far close to the property line. Uh, that seems, yeah. So, I for one don't want to see any of the yeah. region. You're going to get sell a sport. hell of a lot of pushback. Yeah. I don't want to see any of it. Sport. You're going to get the salt boy. You know, the future of Johnson is on right on the cusp, isn't it? Like, you know, yeah. it, it all relies on an engineer to say where, where the line is. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> and have yeah. them all. Yeah. yeah. Keep raising it up. It's also possible that we can't even move a structure like that across the bridge and, you know, that all of this is kind yeah. of. I think that's uh, already been a. Yeah. Yeah. We've, we've already talked to the engineers. Oh, okay. All, okay. You can be moved across the bridge. Yeah. All right, I was on an interest. And they're going to pick yeah. that building up and move it over there without yeah. cracking it. We're yeah. meeting with the yeah. village electric department to walk with an engineer tomorrow just to verify what uh, what needs to be moved and what the cost would be for any wire of your location. And so we we don't own the part where the parking lot is? No, it's actually a separate lot that goes with the basketball mm -hmm. courts across the okay. street. It feels odd that it's not part of the town, but yeah. it surprised me, but it, it's not. So I was because I guess that was what my impression was of where the library was gonna go. They just feel it was there. It was staked out. I mean it was, it was high. I think that was number one on the list, on Howard's list. Um it's just a matter, I think right now it's just down to we need a certificate of elevation to make sure that we're not we're only doing this once, you yeah. know. Well, thank you for the update, Tom. Any further questions? Well, we probably won't be here in five years. Mark's not going to be here for the next 500 year fund. <laughs> well, I'll be here. Could, in could be here. Howard, do you have anything more at all? What? Do you have anything more at all? Yeah. Do I? Yeah. Yeah, well, I've got the Legion Field presentation. I couldn't hear what you said. I've got the Legion Field presentation. Oh, the shed on the field. Okay. Which I'm going to just go ahead and do when my time comes and ignore what just happened. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> okay. Uh, still want to be bombed? Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Do we have any buyout applications? No new applications. All right. By the way, Rosemary is just hoping for a fist fight. <laughs> Num item number eight is canceled because we'll there's be no court applications for review of buyout. Uh, you're here for arts, community space flood, and you're here for Legion Field. I guess Casey's closer closer to the hour. That's fine. Uh, item number nine, art and community spaces flood resilience grant. Tom, would you like to take this away? Okay. Oh, I right. Casey agreed to leave. It I'm going to pop up here so that everybody get a chance to see the map. Um, this is this is a grant where he's also through the community fund where they're looking for collaboration. And in fact, part of the, the, the core of the idea for this application came from uh, meeting with Tom, Ron, Dean, and me. and I think it was Ron who said, you know, uh, and of course he was talking about theme, but he was saying well, both the theme, well, whether or not it's FEMA related, look at the whole parcel and um, you know, you've got stuff going on, other stuff other than the skate park. So why not always talk about the whole parcel? And we said, yeah, <laughs> duh. And of course, that's how recreation started developing in this was as a whole parcel based on a community use survey back in 2001. Uh, in any case. Casey, when you refer to the whole parcel, which I can't, I can't okay. my yeah. vision isn't good enough to yeah. discern yeah. what have, it is. We have the mouse. Oh, we well, see, you could yeah. see it if Rosemary wasn't blocking Duncan. it. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> Duncan used to be our most elbow and select board member. Yeah. He used to Thankfully, be. I'm not I'm to get rid of Rosemary. <laughs> <laughs> the former uh, uh, Mulder Home Park from 1997. So it's the 10 acre park. Would you like to see a sheet of fire? I can see it. it. I did see it, right? Yeah, vision. I don't know how I get young Robin. So we don't have that. Deteriorating quickly though. Okay. Okay. Listen. So this is only to like between five and ten thousand dollars. So it will make help to make this a quick presentation. Uh, starting with the favorite three words: no local match. Right. Okay. So uh, it's called art and community spaces. By which they mean by spaces they mean where the community gathers. And that certainly follows, okay? So the, the concept is basically to work with Conservation Commission, because they've, they've got projects going on here, that house, pollinator garden and so forth, uh, the community garden, and then the, the skate park. And so right now, the profile, well, Actually, let me go back to the specs of the grant. Uh, it's the application is due middle of April. They make the announcement sometime in June, and so really you're looking at spending money in July, starting starting July. Um, and our concept so far, we're talking with Tom Perry, or rather. Dave Perry, thank you, for the garden and Lois for conservation is um, they, you know, they've got some needs to do some stuff for the garden. And so far, uh, you know, there's they need some new bathhouses and they want to do more work with the be the change, BEE, -E, the change pollinator stuff, um, you know, but there's there's more opportunities for collaboration. Um, and there's satellite community partners as well, ranging from Laraway, uh, who is an official community partner of the skate park, uh, and Healthy Lamar Valley, possibly the library, still a reuse of space for who knows what. Uh, plus, um, in by July, we will certainly have finished the new half pipe, and it's prime opportunity for you know a party. So that's the kind of, it, that fits exactly with what this grant is looking for. Um, and so that's it. 
Any questions from the board? Um, I may have missed it. Was there a specific uh, like flood resilience piece? No, uh, no, oh, no, but good question. Um, what they're looking to, how it's tied to the flood is that actually this arts and community spaces is a sub pot of money within the larger pot that Randall is doing. Or, you know, it's a pod outside of that pod, but it's a smaller pod. Okay. So, and they want to um, sort of help you with some stuff, but also help you celebrate the work you've done. So, that's that that was a good question. That doesn't sound like there's any material being cut at that point. Any what? Material or anything that affects flood levels. Okay. No, great. None of that. Any further questions? What do you need from us? Approval to apply. So, so moved. All right, motion a second. Further discussion? Seeing aye. none, all those in favor signify with an aye. All aye. Right. All those opposed? Thank, Thank you, Casey. Casey. You've had me at no local match. Rosemary, <laughs> still pushing you down? Sure. <laughs> You're the one that keeps asking. Rosemary's staying all night. Um, uh, mowing RFP, this can be a pretty quick one, Tom. Uh, can I just put it together and put it out? Do you want me to send it down to you first? Or... Would the board like to see the mowing RFP or would the board like Tom to prepare one and send it out? Well, I have a fundamental question. Yep. In the past, it's been a combined RFP for town and village properties. Mm -hmm. Do we want to have it be what? It, it, and part of the problematic piece of that is it requires <clears throat> the consent of two boards to A, put it out, and B, accept a vendor. Do we want to just have it be for town properties um, and perhaps the municipal building, which is a combined property? I agree. I want to work for town property and our combined property. They can get the building. That's got to be quicker. Is yeah. there any mowing that happens at the mill house? I, mean, I, I don't know. Two mowing at the mill house. And then the, when you have the whole boat garage, you just mess with it. Yeah, I don't think they do any mowing. They, 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 they do it at the mill house in this building. Conceptual proposal could we uh, ask Tom to? Contact the village manager and see if, if the town pays for the municipal building. Are they comfortable with paying, selecting, preparing our fee and everything for the old mill house? What if we drop the bill as if it's just the town yeah. and then add the uh, yeah. MOU that the village will pay 50% of the cost for the following property? Sure. That's sure. a good call. And then we send the MOU to the village board to approve that'll be copied into the RFP. So you you're saying do the wastewater treatment plant the fire department all the town all the joint no property? just just the joint property okay yeah. so town yeah. town and joint property that, that I that I can agree yeah with. I don't I don't want to touch the village owners right that's perfect yeah. okay. but you should probably have conversation with Eric so yeah in the past it's been oh, I'm sure we're just going to take money off RFP and change the property <laughs> just, so, and that's mm -hmm. fine so I think. If we're requesting Tom to repair an RFP and send it out, we need a motion. So we'd like to make one. I'll make it. And it's your motion. Yes. To authorize Tom to prepare an RFP and send it out for all town only properties as well as own own property and the MOU of the bill and yes. town 50%. That's one. You got that, Donna? All right. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I'll uh, second. There's a motion, a second. Any further discussion? Can we also use this opportunity to um, clarify that Robert and Sons is not doing the uh, strips along the sidewalks? That's really that's really that's pretty intense. Right. Well, I, the the issue that arose last year was out of a lack of clarity of whether Robert and Sons was doing that or not, um, and it ended up being a private landowner who did what the village understood was their responsibility but had not actually been done by 
the vendor for some time. Um, so I guess what I'm looking for is that first, you know, clarity that either Robert and Sons is going to do it, or I'm sorry, either the, the vendor is going to do it or not, um, for clarity that, you know, that is on the private landowner and not something that uh, is going to be done by, by the vendor. I think that's all with the village, just a clarification from that. Yeah. That's yeah. not. Eric and I had a great conversation about it last year and everything, and too, that it's just, it is, I think there's some vagueness there with the right away. Okay. And the grass strip. But I think if we could just come to, a, we could probably come to an agreement verbally and then throw it in the air. Okay. That's what I'm done for. Yeah. There is a question from Dean. Yeah, I just want to bring the common board's attention about the mowing and strictly about Old Mill Park. And of course, you guys all, I'm sure you all remember the struggles that we had, you know, just getting consistent mowing. But the need for especially the athletic fields to really potentially maybe even get extra attention in mowing, especially during uh, any of the soccer seasons and anything like that, because uh, any of that grass getting, you know, getting to any kind of a height, you know, can easily cause, uh, you know, just makes it harder for play. And if we keep the grass, you know, nicely trimmed, I think it will be even a healthier field that we can have for all of our fields. But I just wanted to bring that attention and maybe see if there was anything that we might be able to adjust in the RFP to add that extra attention to those fields. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You want me to put some of the theories in? Yes, our town yes. Yes. Um, um, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed? And the ayes have it. We'll get there. No two down. I swear. Uh, there's a noise ordinance re request uh, for field days, and those dates are in the packet. On for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, July 19th to the 21st from 8 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. What are the board's wishes on that? Thanks, Rosemary. It's fine with me. They're quieter than some wedding they have over there. There's, there's, <laughs> uh, you live up behind there. Is that what Mike won't feel pro done consecutive? Motion a second. Any further discussion? Sounds like it was already had. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, the ayes have it. There's also a noise ordinance waiver for Tuesday night live that Tom said was in the packet uh, for tonight. And that is Tuesday night live 2024, uh, July 9th and, uh, until 9 p.m. But our noise ordinance doesn't kick in until 10, right? Um, it is for all. It's uh it's got yeah. start seven nine twenty-four and eight is that eight twenty seven yeah, the twenty of okay. August twenty August thirtieth or something. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'll hold Mr. Chairman. Second over. Motion a second for Tuesday night live on the Tuesdays. Every Tuesday for two months. In July and August. Further discussion? And it's not gonna rain ever. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. So we really don't need to do this ever again since they end at 9 o'clock. Uh, our noise ordinance waiver is 10 p.m. Well, well yeah, but it's a noise. The ordinance talks about amplifying noises. Yeah. So and sometimes we run a little long, but it's not going to be Yeah. Sounds good. Rosemary keeps getting bombed. Oh, um, okay. Our next item is item number 12, which is storage shed at Lean Legion Field. Um, are you or I guess Howard's going to present on that? Um, so I can do this short or I can do this longer. Short. Uh, okay. running short, a little short bit good. So um, the question is, uh, the, the, sh the short thing we need to know is, can we can we get the town guys to go down there and level a portion of the field for the, for the ice rink? It's a, it needs a space that is uh, 50 by 100 feet. Um, there are two ways to do it. One is to just flatten 
uh, flatten a portion of it uh, and uh, not uh, and not make a, uh, a uh, an indentation in the lawn such that we can fill it with water, um, which is the second option. So in other words, we take we take the the, the flat of a fifty by hundred, and we make that three inches lower than the rest of the field at dead level. So uh, all the uh, uh, all, all Brian has to do is go down there with uh, his liner, lay it in there, fill it full of water. He doesn't have to set boards up around it, um, which is something he would prefer, but it doesn't really matter. Otherwise, we just take and level a portion of the field that's at least 50 by 100, and he sets boards up on that, sets a liner in it, and then we can have a hockey, uh, have a skating rink. Right now, the skating, um, the area for the skating rink, the most level place on the field is is uh, diving from corner to corner about uh, about six inches out of level. So we end up with that much ice on one end, that much ice on the other. Doesn't work. And that's going to require some getting getting a new fancy grader in there and some guy with a, with a laser level, I presume, just have that in. And then reseeding. And are you peaceful, Howard, with putting a big divot in the middle of this thing? I don't care about divot. I'm not crazy about the library. Well, the library is not going to go in the middle of the field. But yes. there are a lot of people who could care about the divot when they're winding around to the net live ball. Right. I mean, it would be. All right. So I'm going to go. I'm going to get into my longer list here then. So I, the question um, I had about um, where the hockey rink or where the ice rink should go because it, 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 at this point it can go anywhere where it gets level anywhere in that field um and the question about a utility building storage utility building for use of the oven and for uh recreation uh and uh town utility uh it has come up also so i sat down and i did a plat of uh, a sketch uh, for myself of the the, the, the most um, the most appropriate uses of Legion Field, and and it addressed all at the same time addressed all the problems that we're having down there at Legion Field. We need more electricity on the field. We should have another place for water or two on the field. Um, it's an opportunity, for instance, for uh, indoor bathrooms or or water facility down there near the, near the bread oven. All those kinds of things. Lighting on the field would be nice. Um, and uh, so I wrote up, and you guys have seen this thing, I presume. No? No. Wholeheartedly, I was only coming tonight prepared to discuss a storage shed. Okay. All right, fine. The storage shed. Can you email that? Yes, I will. I will. Send it up to the board. Or uh, I will. No, I will. Yeah. Um, uh, the storage, the storage shed um, I'm proposing is uh, 10 feet wide and about 40 feet long. It will contain. It'll be a series of individual spaces laid out for uh, with a porch over it, uh, a porch roof uh, that would um, be backed by the backdrop by the backstop, uh, backed up against the property line. So it's a long, skinny thing back there. It's, right, it's the best place on the field for it, and um, that's that's what I'm that's what I'm proposing. And what I need from you guys tonight is uh, at least a, ten, uh, a, ge a general approval of doing something on the field with, with the shed. Uh, or not. If you don't want to shed on the field, let me know, and I'll just put all this stuff on my walls. But, um, but that's the first thing that we have that I have to locate is, is, is the shed. And, and then all the other stuff will come along. Right? And not very long from now, to do a presentation of the entire field upgrade. So, are you just looking for conceptual approval on yeah. the board, willingness for a shed, and not having a number right now? You right, I just the number. I don't have a number at all. Okay. I'm, we're hoping to do this for nothing. We uh, uh D has uh, has, she said she was going to donate all the money. I know it's great. It was, yes, I love it. So, years ago, Matt, Jimmy, this this was a a big issue with Matt, but you weren't on the board. Mike probably was. Um, Matt was a strong proponent of trying to get a master plan put together. 
for Legion Field. Mm -hmm. um, and I think tonight we're talking about libraries, we're talking about 10 by 40 buildings, um, we're talking about ice rinks. Uh, <clears throat> maybe it's time we did a master plan for Legion Field. There it is. Yeah, well, it's yours. I know. Yeah, well, it's mine. <laughs> Which is probably great. Yeah, but, uh, one of the master planning areas. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I'd be happy to. Uh, yeah, so I, I just need to know if, if you guys object vehemently to having to shut off the field anywhere. Let me know. Oh, am I out to lunch or did somebody at one point talk about putting a storage shed behind the van stage? We're That's well. Hard. We're gonna we're gonna be doing that our own selves at no cost to the town, Mike. Um, we're getting a we're getting a uh, storage trailer like the one outside here, you know, the, like those things out there. Oh, well, next year we'll probably own one because you're gonna rent one like like that, and tuck it between the bandstand and the and the bank. So not not toward the elementary school, but toward the you know the, the old dormitory. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's two hundred bucks a buck. Uh, yeah, it's going to cost us something like 350 bucks for two months, something like that. But they say set up, you know, take up. Yeah, I mean, that's we, we've got that figured out, like, and we're we're paying for two TNL is paying for so, um, uh, and that's going to get tucked in there, and that's where we're going to stash our, our audio gear and like, stuff like that. And uh, that's the only safe place. I mean, you know, I built a closet in the back of the yeah, I remember. Bandstand, and uh, you know, and I don't know, it's never been broken into, which somebody else just brings a screwdriver and they're in. But um, uh, so we would like to, uh, our our audio gear is getting to be a big, big piece of money. And we want to, we want to see the box. So um, that's what we're going to do with that. And if this works out for us this year, we're, we're renting the thing this year to prove the concept. And if we if it works real well for us, we'll just over the winter we'll find one and install it. Paint it dark brown like this, like the shed is you think it's all there. Um, I don't believe the board can argue with it at all. I think anything you do is gonna be tasteful and have to be seen. Right. Well, you'll get you'll get this, you'll get to uh, yeah, I just thank you. I just need approval to keep yeah. moving. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. We can do a quick temperature check. Any favor of the show? You're 10 by 40. Which is conceptual. Conceptually, yeah, but it makes a big difference where it is, I guess. Yeah. I well, know. you'll have an opportunity to discuss that. You're going to come back yeah. to us and discuss the. If you don't want me to do anything, I'm not going to do anything. Yeah, no, I. I <laughs> 10 by 40 sounds big to me. Well, Maybe we'll get there, though. Yeah. We'll get there. Well, it's. There's a lot of but, stuff. For, there's right, a lot my of daughter stuff. says, if you have a space, you'll fill it. Right. Yeah, well, <laughs> and by 40, it's the master. Don't just take it in my duck. Conceptually, it sounds like you're okay. Yeah. Understanding that you're going to have to come back. Right. Fine with Conceptually, me. sounds like conceptually the Great. Right. I don't need a motion from the board or anything. Right. Right. And, no. and it sounds like there's grant money to build this shed. Well, D, you want to say anything about that real quick? Um, we're going to apply for better places, right? And that does require 33% uh, community funding. So it doesn't come from any from you guys, but that we have to raise it to the community. And the community, <clears throat> Vermont Community Foundation said that they would help us with whatever uh, better places does it. They pretty much said that. All right. Good news. Yep. Thank you. Very Thank you very much. Okay. Very, very good. good. Yeah. Rosemary, I can't keep coming. Okay. Rosemary, thank you. It's okay. getting way too far behind. And thank you for working so hard. Appreciate it. Thank Town clerk treasurer's report that I so awesomely skipped over for Randall and Rosemary has been so patient about. No matter where I go, that elephant's So, <laughs> so did you see me smile? Because it's it's always focused on you. No matter where she went over there, over there it didn't make a peep, and it just zoomed right in on the face. <laughs> Magnetic first. Yeah. That owl knows where the money is. <laughs> Must be AI or something. It is. Scott, did you have anything you were just? No, I'm just taking all in. 
Every right. time we go to a school board meeting, but since it was for this board, that's well. <laughs> well, we're glad you're here, This is yeah. a bit. <laughs> this seems a little more relaxed, probably. Yeah. <laughs> when we get to dredging the river, though. So, Rosemary, the floor yeah. is yours. Sweep us away. Okay. On the budget status report, total of expenses are about 55,000, 55% for the year. And that so far, I haven't seen any bills for any gravel for the mud season yet. It's still in the process. Yeah, it's painful. Are we are we buying gravel like crazy? And uh, the pit only has ten more of those left. Jason's going to buy what he can, and then if we need more from our stockpile, we'll have to go to probably even. So that's yeah, he just called me this morning to say that that we're thinking that these ten mills are hopefully get us through pretty much most of the way from that season. That is that Percy or I got that. I think that's Percy's. Yeah, that's crazy. That's it's kind of crazy. Mud season is boring. Well, that's crazy. Yeah. Is Is that and I gave you a list of delinquent tax seniors for last year. Big year. Am I at it? Yeah. Not yet. And to date for current taxes, we're at 76.74% collected, which is around what for the past two years are. And I have one request for a board of abatement, and I may have another request coming for a board of abatement. Okay. When would you like to hold those hearings? Special day, they're usually too long to hold before a select board of abatement. So you might have two? I have one now, and another request is out, but I had to come back in. So it's likely to be two. What time it would number is it blood related? No, no, either one. Okay, they'll be longer. Um, okay, same one number. is for that main tour property, or this fire, and the other one may be a fire. Has well, it happened yet? It has happened, but the <laughs> fire hasn't happened. Yet. Well, they, haven't submit, they haven't submitted the, an application. Uh, item number 16, a special meeting for employee evaluation. Uh, we can pick a date. Okay, I was trying to pick a date. You didn't want people to have their phones out of place. Uh, can we do it in July? That's fine with me. And people may not want to wake up in them. What's everybody's calendar look like for a board of abatement hearing? I I mean I'm assuming we can do it before then. Um, I am out of town for a week in April from the 12th to the 20th. Um, aside from that, yeah. Ideally, it would be good to get it out before. Okay. For Newcastle, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the fact that those are very seven. Yeah. What do you need? Three select board members? Gorm. Gorm, the board of the She needs to be here. You haven't been the one yet. Come on. I think I have been. He's been the one. What? Um, what? So let me pick a if, date in May. If we're trying to stay in the municipal building, could you email out a proposed date that there's not a meeting here? And uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, we should be downstairs by then. So hopefully, like, yeah, because you're in May. It's going to take a couple of weeks to get set up down there to get this stuff all down there. Yeah. Is everybody comfortable with that? A May time frame. May time frame. Yeah. Rosemary is going to email out proposed date <laughs> with no other meetings already scheduled. It's still good. We're planning on having a tax birthday some some day. We're looking into it. My birthday. They're getting harder and harder. They're getting harder and harder too. 
with all the well, state regulations. It's changed considerably in the last four or five years. Yes. Do you have anything else for us, Rosemary? I have no liquor license or cannabis licenses. Anybody on the board have questions for Rosemary? Oh. Mark usually wants to know what, what interest we're making at the bank that got robbed. <laughs> they didn't get any of that I money, had right? To had to throw that one in there. Good. I want us to put more money in the high interest bearing account. So that's all right. And the priorities. If there's nothing else, we're going to jump right back down to 13. This one you actually have to have your phones out for. So this is just setting a date for the planning projects and priorities meeting. And it usually takes a whole meeting. I should have got a folder. That word. It would be great if committees could come as well. You still in the hallway, is it No, we're, we're just I, email. I, email. I, I, I think all, when we pick a date, uh, if the board's okay with it, it would be nice if Tom could just email like the committee chairs and encourage participation by them. As well as getting this out on Facebook and put porch forum because this is a pretty big one. Is that like we, we did last? Yeah, we do, it every, we do it every year. We do it every year. Paper and, and the yeah. other portion of this after we pick a date is how does the select board want to do it? I wasn't in love with the way that it happened last year, but uh, mm -hmm. I could be convinced. Yeah, there's. So let's pick a date. Mike's probably the busiest one here. He's the oldest. This goes back to let's get that all out. Get it over with. Let it right in a minute so that I'm the oldest one here. This this the oldest boy kind of takes up some real estate, and we don't have an open space yet. Yeah. Do we have a better idea? Two or three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. So we're meeting yes. and how many is on that list? Like 40 on, on this to do list. I can send you out the results for the last two years. Well, you know, we spent we spent hours on this to get the priorities and uh, and then we get to four or five at the top that are the ones that we really need to work on. Why don't we just get the ones that have been hanging around for years and years? And just focus on that. Really? Well, because there's a lot of things that have happened in the last few months that are going to change some of that. We're going to end up having a pile of property coming to the town station that we're going to want to have plant. I have thinking about all this, all this property that's going through buyout. We should be thinking about that. So we've got a pile of both comments are good. I would like to set a date. Yeah. I, agree. I do agree with you. There's low hanging fruit that's been out there for a while, and we could use those as a starting point for sure. But let's get a date. Fine. Two or three weeks. We're meeting in two weeks, Monday, right? Yep. The trustees meeting the Monday after that. I mean, this. Well, no, that's because it's a purpose. They're moving their meeting. For the clips, yeah. Um, not that. wanting to rush them mm -hmm. into getting everything back in the office and seeing that the next meeting after that is. I'm going to be in Colorado. Um, can we push it off until May? Or do we want to push our second meeting in April out until I get back? Then we can all. I think because of the state of the office, May is reasonable. What do you guys think? It's a little bit late for the meeting, but understanding this year's meeting. <clears throat> May 20th. All right, there's a proposal. Works for me. Mark. Okay. May 20th. Are we going to start at five? Get out of here. Yeah. Okay. Board okay with that? Yeah. Fine. I was going to say, like to what you said, uh, one of the priorities I think most of the board had on the list last year was moving the Jewett property forward. Which is, I think, one of those things that it was, you know, kicking around for a long time and hadn't had anything done with it. And I'd say we've made some pretty significant progress over the last year. So, I understood. Uh, we do have class four roads. It's been 
Hang it around for a good year. And I'll be mute. I'll be on my next season. Um, I mean, last year we had priority to hire a town administrator. Yeah. yeah. I know there's always things that we did it. throw wrenches in the works, but you know, the class four road business, there were some people in the past that spent a lot of time. On. I was on the planning commission that yeah, pushed that policy bill. So do we have any proposals on how to handle that meeting? You know, I've, I've done it twice. One time we have all got five snippies and wrote what we wanted on and then regrouped them another time. We kind of wrote the previous years up there and every sticky note got a bow. And then there was this little side note. We wanted to have an open conversation and have some sort of polling mechanism. What if we said for previous years, I had it where, and then we could strike some of the ones off that, hey, look, they were a priority, time is bad. And then have a, it's like a quick evaluation of elimination, right? Because some of those are not going to be relevant. And then if you each put out like five of your own ahead of time, that way you're thinking about it. You know, I think we'll, we can talk about it at the meeting, but think about it ahead of time. Right? Sometimes that deliberation of like a new idea takes long. When if you, if everybody knows what everyone else is thinking ahead of time, just. It is. I'm fine with with anybody you know ideas out ahead of time, but it is in the past been a community conversation, not yeah. just a select board one. Yeah, I'm okay with that. What I what I didn't like about last year's was the everybody gets a sticky and we put the numbers up, and so there were what four or five people from the community. Um, yeah, and I think the majority of Community members last year voted for a town rec center. The one thing yeah, that so I, don't, I don't think we're getting a real good you, flavor of what the community wants, and I don't know how I don't know how we get that. I really don't. Social media. Uh, I would certainly advertise this meeting uh, and you know get it out there that it's happening, so that people who are interested in sharing their input can come. Um, the other thing that I would change about what we did last year is if we clarify, you can't write the same thing on all five sticky notes. And, you know, that, that, that fixes the issue that you were talking about. Well, um, it, yeah, I mean, I, you, I, I, I'm someone who does think that long term, you know, that is something that I would love to see in this community. I am not, you know, it, it's not something that last year I was saying we should dedicate all of our energy and resources towards, but I was saying, you know, that this is something that long-term we should be planning on how we can make something like this happen. Um, you know, I didn't write all five on, on for that one and, and a couple people did, and that's what made the votes go in the way. Right. Um, I think if we were to say, you can only write each thing down one time, it actually gets a better. I don't even like this, the whole concept of, this, of the sticky things. I'm much more inclined to do something like what you said, solicit opinions or ideas from the general public ahead of time. Yeah. Or ahead of time or or um at the meeting or both. <laughs> um you know, I think you get a better, I think you might get a better sense of you know what what the priorities are. And I also think that, you know, you know, it's kind of to your point, Mike. Some of the things that ended up as high priorities on that list weren't necessarily things that we who sit here every week and deal with the issues and problems week to week would have prioritized exactly as the highest ones on the list. I couldn't have said that any better. The board knows what the priorities are. And we know the ones that have been kicked around for years. Those are the ones that should be taken. You know, and then the rest of them just throw wrenches in the works. We have things that we need to take care of. So it's got to come. Yeah. Um, so I've been through these meetings a lot with the state, and stickies are on a whiteboard or huge, but we have rules to follow. And, you know, it has to be obtainable. 
and you have to be able to measure the output. There has to be some way to measure. So that's your calling ability of the board, but it's not obtainable and you can't measure the progress it falls to the side. And if you get a better spectrum of what the town and village is thinking, all committees, I mean, we have so a dozen committees, invite all the chairs from all the committees to this meeting. And that can give you a better depth of what the community is looking for because they're already engaged in their own thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it will just make things happen a bit quicker. In your scenario, too, if you're dealing with a state level, you, you, you kind of have a captive audience of people vibrating in sympathetic resonance. You know, the issues are the issues are not amorphous. They're you know they're fairly solid. So, in that case, seeking opinions or ideas on how to address those makes more sense to me than it does a really open-ended format. Yeah, that's why I'm saying the committees that we already have in place that are working at home kind of attributes for the federal community as a state I already have a great depth of knowledge. So why not invite the chairs to have yep. a conversation? Yeah. I, but just keeping that you know, is the goal of attainable can measure progress. Those are two huge things. And what I'm hearing, you know, there's been other ideas floated that are still on the list. Obviously, there's no way to measure those. But what I've been hearing. So just having that as a sort of if you're going to commit and have a conversation through the community members that they know that the goal has to be obtained. That's like the first thing. So wrecking the we already have so much recreation going on in the town. For a record, we talked about it before. We don't have cash for it. So is it obtainable? Not right now, no, not with the town half budget. We're still building on what we need to do. And we have limited tax money. I mean, the school just grabbed a huge swap of it. So if you're looking for, you know, tax from media members, that has to be sort of factored in. It's great to have a right bill, but we can't afford it. There's too many other things that are broken in Johnson right now. Well, that, that's your opinion. So that's that's a value is, judgment. That's a value as a taxpayer. Yeah. And, and I don't disagree yeah. with you, but yeah. yeah, that's different than what we can do. Well, well, it, it's it's based on what people can afford and what people want. And I'm not basing it all on my my tax. I'm saying there's ways to facilitate a good meeting, a good outcome that gives you good paper. I think I would also I would like to hear from. People in the town, where their vision is, where do they see Johnson in 10 years? Practical or not practical? I I, I don't know you guys. Ron, where do you envision us being in 10 years? What's your vision of the town? Because it's changing, you know, and I would like this to be part of that process. What's your vision for Johnson, for the future of Johnson? Yeah. You know? And yeah. we don't need to do that now, but I would. I like, know. I would like those to say. But if the college goes belly up, that's going to be a big change. So you're kind of saying uh, maybe if we could have one other item in the meeting of like just a half an hour, yeah, twenty minutes, where people could just say like whatever they their vision is. Yeah, the we're in the middle of this town plan. A better opportunity for that town plan to incorporate yeah. this. All in the, the planning commission yeah, is the group that should be doing. Yeah. It's yeah. it, in right. my opinion, it's not right. our function, but to yeah. try and do that long term visioning is the planning commission's role and responsibility. But I think it's really important <clears throat> sometimes the process for which town plans, or at least in my experience, town plans are made and then how they are actually articulated to the board or how they're um, like reacted to by the board. And sometimes, like, there's a disconnect between the daydream of creating the plan and then the physical document that followed some bureaucratic process. And I think getting the board that, to hear the vision and makes is, is just as valuable. You know, even if they read it later with a town plan, I think your decisions will be more responding and less reacting if you know what, if there's a this idea of the vision that's kind of floating around. I, you know, that's just my experience and not, you know, two sides. 
and as someone who was on the planning commission before joining the select board, there was a lot of confusion over what our role was in in future planning. Um, and we kind of had the sense that we were there to do what the select board empowered us to do. So, you know, when it came to the class four roads policy, we worked on that. We took information, we we came up with a policy. Um, since we weren't particularly asked to do any of the long-term planning on any of the other things, the sense was that we we shouldn't do that work. Um, and then, you know, beyond that, like if we were to do the long-term planning on something like, you know, a, a rec facility, there would be major limitations to what we as a volunteer committee would have been able to do when, you know, we would need Citing studies, engineering work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that all costs money that this board would have to approve. So I guess what, I, what I'm saying is that if we are going to expect the planning commission to do that type of work, we have to A, be more clear with them that we want them to do that type of work and B, provide funding for them more than a thousand dollars a year for them to do that type of work. Because otherwise that it's it's gonna go by the wayside. That's exactly what the BCRD. And, and I just wanted to, yeah. before we move on, um, the six priority items that we threw in last year, um, we talked about measurable and actionable items. Um, town administrator hire, check. Economic development hire, check. Light industrial park, in progress, but I, I put half of a check on one. Um, recreation facility, we haven't made much progress on that, I'll admit. Uh, ARPA funds, I will put a half check on that because We've decided where we're going to spend them, and then trails in the talc mill property. Well, maybe we haven't, you know, figured that one out yet. We did get a low rec grant to help out with trails. I'd say we've made progress on that. So, of the six priorities that we identified for ourselves last year, we've made progress or seriously pushed the ball forward on five of them. We've left one up in the air that you know, I, I, I think, yeah, we've done a good job, um, and and that this is a valuable exercise for us. Moving forward. Okay. Thank you. That was well said. Um, I guess it remains on how we want to do it. Maybe a hybrid model, but but certainly maybe maybe I could get an idea together and you know if the board is planning for a meeting, it's totally fine. We're not making any decision. We're just talking about a, a format. To create structure and be more productive. And we don't reply all. <laughs> yeah, don't reply all. You just reply to all. And you can tell me I'm quiet. Don't tell me to tell you. <laughs> Is the board okay with that? I mean, I, we could try to fizzle out an exact plan, but I'm just hearing a lot of like the conversations growing outside of the plan on how to do it and more about, which is fine, but. That was, and we all know the meeting is going to go in many different directions, anyways. <laughs> that <laughs> meeting, well just that wait. meeting's very open ended. Yeah, and I'm glad okay. that you mentioned chairs, Scott. I kind of murmured crap. I wanted Howard to be at that meeting, and I would like the committees to be a part of it as well. Yeah, yeah. all work. all should definitely be there. Yeah. Yeah. For sure, and I believe he was there. Actually, he, he definitely was there, there last year. Yeah, Paul yeah. Warren was that. Yeah. He was definitely there last year. We should probably have Randall. Yeah. Cool. yeah Randall would be a good resource for that meeting in person. Maybe even Rose Randall. Maybe. We can give Rose Randall. It's an excellent uh -huh. talk about communication. This is an excellent time for the general public to see the problems that you deal with that aren't. You know, so not only are they bringing their own priorities, but it really helps me understand the complexity of what you're going through day to day and why you might not be able to pay for it. Fires will happen every day. <laughs> for sure. But fires we've got, we've got, we've got to take each of the state care of the fire. We've, we've selected a date, and I guess that's what we can do. It's fine. Are you folks out of the lot? Do you folks out of the lot? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna end up between the two oldest guys here. You know? We're gonna have to hear this every meeting if we sit here and dump. I feel like I'm not. Do you think so? 
<laughs> we're making you quite <laughs> younger. That's what we're doing. Good. Evan, you just have to be really careful what you say because I used to give all my coworkers grief about being gray haired. <laughs> <laughs> At least you got hair. That's yeah. true. That's true. You guys are a good head of hair, too. So, God. I'm envious. I wish I had that much. Our next agenda item is the open house update. And I also added uh, an historic society board appointment underneath that. But Mom, could you give us the historic, historical house update, please? That's the new name, historical house, I guess. Polk House. Okay. So, uh, very, so I went and visited today with Mary Jean. We walked around for about an hour. Um, I met the contractor, Seth Manchester, and it is, uh, I took those, had those pictures sent and I sent it to you guys. Yes. I mean, it's, it was amazing the extent of the damage that like needed to be addressed that that's why this, I didn't understand really fully why the scope of work had to change. Now I do. It was really valuable, really valuable to see the shape of the, the building, just how much plaster was like coming off the walls and sun peed. Um, and just it's nice to know that we're like moving forward to a to a place that's going to last another 1500 years you know versus band-aiding um the, the condition that i was in and so um i think they they're about halfway done um uh, i think rosemary issued their second and they'll hopefully have it complete so then <clears throat> Maybe next year or the year after, when the historical house comes up with more funding, they have plans for uh, to redo some of the flooring. It's also really pretty worn out, rough shape. Um, and the upstairs bathroom is, is worth a visit. <laughs> it's, um, but it, you know, one one thing at a time. And I think this was probably they made a great choice. This wasn't an immediate concern because anything they put in there, you know, the plaster is falling off the walls on top of whatever exhibits or displays. So. Um, they're not displaying exhibits up there, are they? Yeah, with storage. No, this storage. Yeah. Yeah. Any board members have questions on the update? So I gather the way the picture show, they're taking the loose plaster off and replacing the plaster. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool. I've never, I've, I mean, I've done, I've replastered myself, but never like this. So what he does is he cuts it all out. He puts in these things called plaster buttons. Have you ever heard of these? And it's like they like hold they where the plaster is still good. He kind of goes around the perimeter and hold it holds it in so it won't accelerate, you know. The, and then he fills it with essentially drywall compound and Elmer's glue <laughs> that's mixed together. Really. And then he plasters over it with more of this compound and glue mix. And it has it's a finer texture than true plaster, but it has that same, you know, that same yeah. feel, if you will. And it looks gorgeous. They don't use horse hair. No, I think we have a shortage of horses. It's a little hard to get. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a shortage of horses. They used to use horse hair years ago. You got asbestos problems here. Horse hair. That's some asbestos. Smelly people. Completely. Perfect. Do you have any other questions on that, Kate? No. Um, what, does anybody know what they're going to do about the ceiling? In the, in the building? Well, upstairs. They're going to leave those, they're going to leave those tiles up there. Or are they going to right now, those? They, they are. Yeah, the, the one uh, acoustic tiles are like one eight inch by eight inch or one foot by one foot. Yeah, yeah. I think they're planning on leaving those. Something like Star. Straight back from the back. <laughs> well, I noticed those one one by ones. I think they're one by ones in your picture. Those are <clears throat> those are fiberboard. That's what they're made of. I just yeah, they're like stapled up there with a hand stapled. Yeah, I just thought those would be removed and get back to the original plaster, but they were probably put up there because the original plaster was so bad. I think if I think if they come down, you're gonna find another yes. another hundred, another ten thousand dollars. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. The next item was an added item uh, by me at our March sixth meeting. The board asked me to reach out to. Uh, the historic society's chair, I did, and I copied Doug Gooden's bomb. They are a nine member committee. They would be interested. I think they had a meeting and they got back to me. They would be interested in going to nine members with having select board liaison, and they would be accepting of Mike being that member. So if I would entertain the motion to appoint 
Mike Dunham to the Historic Society of Hudson for Fort Wilkins. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Further discussion? That we get up to eight. So we'll still we still need to post one vacancy. Still need yeah. Did you see in my email? I said like eight question mark. I saw I, I saw the with one going back and forth with Dick. <laughs> what about the long one with all the appointments that I sent? I, mean, I know you read it because you replied back to me and said I'm literally laughing out loud right now. Oh yeah, probably because I didn't read that part. <laughs> <laughs> Could have kept reading the DRV comments from there too. Um so there's a motion and a second. That was just a comment. All right, that was a comment. discussion. All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. All right. All those opposed. Do I vote for myself? Or you just abstain? You can't. You could do whatever. I could vote for myself if I was on the ballot. You could? Aye. I think right. you're a conflict of interest. The eyes, the eyes have it. Thank you. All, nobody voted opposed. You're welcome. Congratulations, Mike Donald. Yeah. Did you know about this before tonight? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I could have said, oh, oh myself. So. Maybe, maybe you yeah, we were at the last <laughs> meeting. We had, we had uh, talked about having Duncan do it. But so we need to update that spread. spreadsheet. Okay. I can do that tomorrow. Uh, need be. You know, I've been having with you, manager. Well, if, that's fine. If I'll you're okay with asking your number. If she reads the minutes every time and then she kind of goes through and that's how the thank you cards get submitted. And that's very helpful. I think all what I'll do is I'll ask her to then whenever there's a new appointment, it'll just be yeah. so that way we'll keep running. She's reading the minutes. She's on the call right now. So hey, yeah. she might be listening. If you add a line, so there's nine historic society board members, make one of those lines, Mike Dunham, please. Thank you. Our next item, Dean, the soccer field used for spring soccer. And there is email and then some you, information on that in the packet on page. You did a write up, page 11 and page 12. You did a write up this afternoon. Yeah, the write up this afternoon. So I know this is something that has been discussed before um I, I do believe a little while back um so every spring i get uh several different groups outside of our town uh interested in using our soccer fields for their programs um uh, right now i i have two and um we don't currently run a spring soccer program so maintaining the soccer fields to game levels during the spring is not where my resources typically go to. So when they make a request to use the fields, it's also they make a request, you know, the fields are lined, they're, they're prepped for games. Um, and so um, I'm just kind of wondering, according to the facility use request form that we use for all of our areas, it does say that we, you know, reserve the right to maybe charge, uh, you know, a fee to utilize. Um, and since, and the reason that I bring it up is because we don't utilize the fields for our, it is an extra thing that I would, that I take on um, to beyond what I normally would. And so wondering about maybe offsetting some of those costs, uh, the paint is not, isn't, hasn't gotten any cheaper to line the field, takes time to do that. Um, we also have to make sure, you know, in the spring that Everything's all, you know, all good for safety wise for players to be running up and down those fields. Um, so I just thought I'd make a proposal to the board on their thoughts about um, about coming up with whether whether or not we should explore it. And then I gave a, a potential amount of thirty dollars a day. Um, it's very low, but at the same time, I don't want to also, you know, it also brings people into our into our town. It brings people that normally don't. They travel here, they play games here, um, they have practices here. And so it does bring people, you know, into our community. So I don't want to, I don't want it to be something where it stops people from doing that. I just think recovering a little bit of the additional costs that we uh, that we take on from doing that might be a positive thing. $30 seems pretty cheap. Yeah, it's, it's cute. 
Do you have a sense of how many times there's a request? How many days? To... Um, right now, I have two different programs. Uh, Are one they single day events. What's that? Are they is, is it? You say two programs. Is it a single day or no? Multiple no, days? multiple days. One program wants to use our use two of our fields for multiple practices and games. One other program wants to use our largest field for up to five, potentially six games. Um, uh, so that is currently this summer, this spring. That's the gist of my request that I've got. So is that like six separate days? Or? Uh, there's six days of games um, on the U14, our largest field, which is the farthest one to the back. Uh, the other uh, group to reach out to me would use the secondary field, the one that's our primary smaller field, U8, and also the U14. They wouldn't be on corresponding, they wouldn't be same days or whatnot, they would be, uh, one of them is more of a practice schedule with some games intermixed, and the other one, I'm waiting to hear back, but they're specifically wanting to just use it for games. We're a centralized location. We get uh we we hear it all, i hear it all the time about hey if we play in johnson you know if you pull from this side you pull from this side uh one of the groups that's reaching out to me is you know uh fairfax uh soccer um so they're they're wanting to utilize our space yeah Mark. so are these all nonprofit people yeah they well I, I can't say that for sure. They're all um, sports programs that are that are in other that are organized by other towns and other areas. I don't know if they're non We're talking less than five hundred dollars. Yeah, we're not talking. No, but I'm just saying. Yeah. you know, is it worth trying to collect five hundred dollars? Well, um, um, and. You know, if they're bringing that many people into our town, maybe maybe then we should ponder whether it's worth even bother the administrative cost of collecting it. And historically, we we haven't. Um, um, and from past people in my position, I've heard that you know they've taken that stance um, because sometimes these other programs <laughs> let Johnson kids into their programs and. So then it's kind of like a couple kind of thing. Um, but again, I wanted to kind of bring it to the board's attention and see what you see what you think. And it could be something that we explore. What about the towns charge? I haven't been able to hear any feedback from what other towns do on that aspect. No. Um, yeah, I was going to ask the same question. And I was also going to ask if but you that's had a good question. Um, Talk to any of the people, any of the uh, people running the programs that have come here in the past and ask them whether this would be a deal breaker for them. Um, no, I have obviously not. Obviously, they're going to tell you they would prefer it, not to pay, yeah. but, you know, and, if, if it turns out that other towns are charging way more and that this is the best option because it's charging mm -hmm. less and it's central. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. I, it's a hard thing because I don't want to push anybody away, but I also, it's also, you know, extra work. It's extra work. Yeah. It's extra work and extra time and extra resources. I was also going to ask, um, even if you just have an estimate, how much time do you think you dedicated to this last year? I don't at this current time. If you could come up with something of an estimate and just get it to us, just so that we have some idea of what it costs the town to provide this. Um, I can give you an estimate of during my regular season when I am maintaining the soccer fields for town use, um, typically takes, uh, I try and line them at least twice a week. Um, each lining takes about two hours to get done. Um, and then any kind of, any kind of maintenance that I get to see around the goal areas, nets, um, uh, any kind of issues there um, kind of adds in. But that would be kind of just for tonight would be a couple of things. And so for these, you would just be doing that work surrounding the time that they would use the field essentially. Yeah. Well, 
Yeah, you got to try and, well, depending on weather and stuff, you have to line at least twice a week in order to keep the lines there so you don't have to replumb lines uh, yeah. after, you know, with rain and mowing and stuff like that. So you get, just got to keep it up. You said from the outset that when other towns come, they expect it to be the line. Yes, sir. You said that. Yes, sir. To me, if they're not paying anything and they expect that to be done for them, that's kind of presumptuous, I think. I well, think if they they can align their own, I think what I mean if I can I think I think what what Dean is saying there is that when when any organization is putting on a, a league or a tournament or hosting their games here, they they want the turf they want the field to be set up to standards, right? Um, well, we're this, talking this about practice. Conversation, we're talking about yeah, practice. Sure. Yeah. This this whole conversation, I think. It, I mean, it, it, it's a great conversation to have because I think we should be charging for this for exactly what you're saying. If people are going to have that expectation, then they should if they are going to be using what should be, you know, professionally standard standardized fields, then yes, they should also pay for it. I understand. Uh, if we're hosting a tournament, then it's a given and it should be done. Mm -hmm. But if you get some group coming in, they want to be here for five days and practice, they can line their own. Well, That's the way I look at it. I understand your view, um, and I would, and I would kind of, kind of couple that with, um, we have an incredible resource of having Old Mill Park, and people are coming and asking to use it for a reason, is because we have great fields, and it's a sense of pride that I try and hold up for Johnson, and if people are coming from other areas to use our use our fields and use our spaces, I want to I want to make them look the best that I can. Okay. You did mention it in the first place, like they expect it to yeah. be done. Yeah. So if somebody yeah. expects something to be done, I feel like they do it themselves. Yeah, the expectation is probably also based on historically, you know, they call me up and they coordinate and or people who have had my position in the past and and they, you know, to get to make sure that fields are correct for them to be able to utilize. Yeah. But I still like them. Scott, could we try just donating like your slang for your donation instead of charge charge? You know, and that gives each group the ability to say, no, I, I can't, we don't have cash. But if somebody has money to donate for maintenance, to pay, we're not sure we're using our nets, we're in care of nets. Yep. And at least you got something better than they do say. There's a, yeah. another idea. Board ready to. When I was growing up, played a lot of soccer. Um, and I think the rec director set the lines once, but then the coaches, like, we would all, like, all the kids would, like, pull the goals out of the way, pull the flags. And then at the end of practice, the coaches lined it. So it was like part of, like, part of the practice was, like, getting the field ready for the next team or the game or whatever. But it was like, so yeah, we supply the paint and the and the rolling thingy, but then but it, it does take extra time for you to like you have to set the framework for them to follow for them to trace essentially. Mm -hmm. I have a similar memory, Tom. What I also now know with my adult lens that those coaches were paid uh, by by town recreation department to do that work. I don't know what it was like in your town, yeah. but that's how it was in in St. Albans, and so you know. Relying on volunteers to do this stuff is great when we have the volunteers to do it. Uh, I think, you know, putting the expect, talking about expectations, putting the expectation on a coach who might be traveling from another town who comes here on game day and sees, oh God, there's no lines on the field that, you know, that would be another. My personal take on this is that I, I, I agree with Dean that we have a gem in Old Mill Park and its proximity to the rail trail and that anything that we can do to make it better uh, is is worth it. Uh, I also think that this kind of dovetails with your previous ask about mowing down there as well. Um, and I would love it if your whatever fee we come to on this, if we decide to go that direction, could include that as well. Um, I, I think that that's a cost and, and whether it's you doing it or our town vendor doing it, um, you know, we should we should find a way to pay for it. 
would anybody think about doing a, a kind of a mix and match, um, setting a fee, but allowing the fee to be waived if the group did its own line? I'm perfectly fine with that. Yeah. Potential idea, Mark. I I just think this. I'm going to vote no. That's what you might. It, it, it may total five or six hundred or a thousand dollars for several hundred people to come to our town to play soccer. I just think it, I just think it's, we're talking economic development. If you're bringing these people in, they're going to stop at MOOCs and have ice cream or do something. I just, would you say no to donations? I don't think, I don't think it matters one way or the other. I probably would. I think it should be a, we're a public entity. These are other, you know, other towns, if you research in every other town is charging money, that's fine. But for a thousand dollars or less, I think we want these people in town. We want them to see our beautiful town and be here and, and recreate. Because this is just the beginning of part of a bigger recreation plan. For yeah, I appreciate your, your, your that's, that's just my opinion. I, yeah, I think we're a little bit, I think we're a little bit spread. What are the wishes of the board? Anybody going to make the motion? You said you weren't looking for anything tonight, anyway. Just kind of bringing this up to dissect. Um. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think there's a little bit more that I can uh, after this conversation, you know, that I could look into whether other, uh, you know, other places are charging. Um, but you have and, requests right now. What's that? You have requests. I have right, right now, now. Uh, you know, but. I also feel like I don't know, even if you guys said to charge for this spring, I, you know, at this point, you know, conversations have already started with these entities and it might, you know, I'd hate to, oh, by the way, we're going to, we're going to throw a charge on you, you right. know, when we're in the middle of conversing about it. So this probability would be something that would be applied you know, next spring. Right, so then it gives you time to yes, find does. out about other channels. Yep, there's a lot of sleep and talk. Okay, yeah. Well, I just like to think of uh, you know, talking about how we want to see Johnson and, and the future in 10 years. I would love to see this other place where you know our ball fields are being used as well, uh, for all of the you know regional towns to come and host their, their little league tournaments here every single year because we've got. Well, maintained so you know, yeah. so there's a there's a chicken in the egg question there. And you know, I'm not sure which one should come first, but I know if we invest, we're doing our turn. <laughs> so we can serve Mackenzie hot dogs too. Just cool. so we're providing clear direction <laughs> for our employees. I'm gonna make a motion. Okay, that would be great. What well, is your motion? I'm gonna make a motion to accept Dean's recommendation for thirty dollars a day. With the caveat that if anyone wants to do their own lighting, maintenance, whatever, the fee can be waived. It's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Would that be effective immediately, Duncan? Um, I'm okay with having that take place next year. But I'm also okay with it being right now. I mean, I think Dean. You know, right, wrong, or otherwise, and I get your point that you know whatever we're paying Dean to do that may, in the long run, be worth it. I don't know how you equate ice cream cones with tax dollars, but um, I suppose you can. Uh, well, it's helping businesses. I yep, I understand. I appreciate that. I don't know how many. I don't know if there's a direct correlation, but right now we know that Dean is spending some of his time making these fields ready uh, for people who are not in our community. And if there's one person from our community on any of these teams, we wait for the Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Sorry, sorry, I'm cutting this. I will, if there's no second, the motion dies and we can go back to talking. I will second Duncan's motion. All right, there's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I'm wondering what do you want the motion to say about kind of takes effect? He didn't put anything on it. You could propose something and he could accept it. I, I, I would propose that we have it uh, uh, go into effect at the beginning of the next calendar year. Is that 
I've got to go with that. Okay. Right. The motion there, the second there. Uh, friendly amendment to the motion. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. no. Oh, great. <laughs> you gotta make a decision. All right, Shane, how do you vote? Aye. Mike? No. Mark? No. Duncan? Yeah. Dun, da, da, da. Nay. Yeah. I guess that one dies, but uh, do you want to do more information? We're seeking of information. Do we, do we have a consensus on the seeking of information? That's what I was kind of getting at here. Yes, yes, that's what I wanted in the first kind of in the first place. So yeah. there's three members that would like to know if other towns are charging what they're charging, correct? Sure. Yeah. All right. I'll find that out and bring it back to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next agenda item number sixteen, but it was the original sixteen. We've added deleted mode and everything. Uh, there's a setting a date for a special meeting for employee evaluation. Uh, we have three of them. What's this? Um, employee evaluation. Yes. So there's like so. There's so. Let's set another date. We already added two meetings tonight. If we added one third, do all three in one meeting. We already didn't do that. Yeah. 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 Oh, all three employees. I thought you meant all three meetings. No, all, all three, three employees. employees. Yes, all three employees, one meeting. I do believe this is old a little bit sooner, and the majority of this would be an executive session. We're not as constrained by space. So, how about? Next Monday. Thanks. Anybody? Today the twenty fifth. I don't even know when that is. Mm -hmm. It is the twenty fifth. Do you know Randall Sarkey? You guys can look it up. It's October something. I guess next Monday works. It's been so long since I've been around you guys. Right? I know. Why are you know, we were... Why are you asking Tom? Oh, Maybe every he's week. Not quite as in six months. So are you saying we should go? Oh, close. Cool. Mm -hmm. It's close. It's close. It's well, well, yeah. October, November, December, January, February. It's weeks with him. Do you want Randall to have a contract? I don't think we need to get into that discussion. Yeah. I guess the relevance is the timing, putting something together in a week versus putting something together. You know, yes. how much time do you need to prep for that? Or if it's irrelevant, it might be. He has no contract, just works hourly. He's on a six month probation. Yeah. yeah. There's no precedent for the position. Either. So, so do we, we, do we have a clear job description. Yes. Yes. So, I mean, we don't have to stick to Mondays. Um, we could. Roll out Friday, April fifth. Uh, people have a problem with the twenty fifth. Yeah, thank you. Will you want that one on the twenty fifth? Because he wants to pull together stuff. Yeah, I wanted to. I want to put together a proposal and have the board look at it before we meet. But oh, for you, yeah, yeah. okay. Fantastic. Okay. I mean, or um, are you okay talking about it in real time too? That, that's fine. I think a proposal ahead of time. Be appropriate. Uh, well, how much time do you have for that? I could put it together for the 25th, but it wouldn't be a lot of time for you to do So, that's hearing it. hearing that, if we move to the following Friday, that's April 5th. I really don't like Friday. If that's the only day we can make work, then. there's April 4th, which is the following Thursday. That would even be better. I like your fourth Friday. No, I'm still young. That's where I was at. You do have a very youth, youthful mind. That's but, very, but like our brains are in different bonds. Oh, they, I, they are. You're very you? My brain works in our youth. Something's going to happen. The fourth? Yeah. Can I have a Friday? Okay. So, uh, tentative date, unless I hear otherwise by tomorrow morning, we'll do April 4th starting at six and there'll be three employees to review. Is that good for you, Tom? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somewhere like some, uh, 
notification on that or whatever. I think we should start it. Yeah. April 4th, 6 p.m. Oh, wow. For you, there's some people in the building. Yeah, better here. Yeah, my neighbor just down the hill, Gary, made over 15 gallons. Yeah, okay. So we did set that special meeting. Water and sewer. All right. Back to topic, Mark. And we'd like to turn it down. Uh, so we have one more item that was added at the beginning of the agenda. Actually, there's two. Uh, one item was requested by Mike for one meeting a month. You want to present on that or just throw an idea out there? Or what? Well, I'll, I'll present on it. I'll give you background. There, there was a time that we were starting to, you know, it was not unusual to be at a meeting till 11 o'clock and a few went to midnight. And so uh, I came up with a bright idea that maybe we could have two a month and that way things would spread out and we wouldn't be here quite so long. Well, that didn't really work out. Did it was right. Then you want to go back to midnight again? To, to tell you the truth, uh, I think we can streamline it a little more and uh, get rid of, you know, it's like if we had a little bit more information on certain things, we could really study them on our own. And and draw and have our own draw our own conclusion, and maybe speak to that conclusion at the meeting rather than it, it's just like uh, Randall, uh, you know, he spoke for a half three quarters of an hour, you know, going over his stuff. You know, what could his stuff uh, been maybe given to us more ahead of time so we could kind of uh, digest some of that before the meeting so he wouldn't have to go off. I mean, with with Dean, he was about. 15 minutes talking about lining the rec field, I mean, the soccer fields. Um, I think that we are given a little bit more information uh, ahead of time on all these subjects. Like I said, we could look into a lot. Uh, I have watched other towns' meetings, and I don't know how they do it, uh, but a lot of them, it's just, and the meeting is over with. Now, I don't know whether they're chit chatting on their cell phones or talking to each other ahead of time, but their meetings are quick. I mean, I don't know what the new meetings are in Morristown now, but Morristown meetings used to be very quick. And they're a lot bigger town than Johnson. Is, and then they can zip right through this. I don't know if it's the nature of the beast with the board in Johnson that we just talk, 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 you know, and, and we beat things to death and we study things to death. I, I mean, I look at co-op meetings. It seems like, bang, they're done. You know, you have your coffee and your donuts and, and you have one page uh, minutes and you don't know what happens. But I mean, uh, you, you have, a, you have a, a meeting and it's over with, you know? And I, and I like to try uh, uh, once a month instead of constantly going to meetings. I mean, we're, we're doing really well tonight. I mean, it's only 20 past nine. And we accomplished quite a lot. That's true. Uh, but I try, I'd like to try one a month uh, for at least a couple of months to see what I have. I guess that's my speed. That's the Lord's thoughts. I, you know, I've always thought, I've never been on an organization this small that meets twice a week. And now that we have Tom, we have Randall, it seems like we can delegate more to them to bring us information so that we're actually doing meaningful stuff. I just can't believe we can't do it in one I agree with my thanks to you. Thank you. I agree with you most of the time. I'm going to offer even a little bit further historical perspective back from Mike's. Um, for years, I advocated with the both boards to meet twice a month because we wouldn't have to be there until 12 o'clock at night. 
Um, and my thought process at the time was take one meeting of the month, do the business items. And the second meeting of the month, do your planning items or your more narrative. More, yeah. Um, and it did, it, you know, I don't think it, when you guys went to two meetings a month, it seems to me like that didn't happen. That did not happen. Yeah. No. So I, I agree conceptually that it would be great to take the business items, hammer them in one meeting, and then have the second meeting be what I always call a work session meeting, which would be where you might talk more about the class for a road policy or, you know, some other policy or issue. Or bring in a, bring in a committee. Or bring in a committee or, yeah, all kinds of different things. So I, I'm not disagreeing with you that I, and I totally agree with you that I think we could make better decisions if we had more information. And I think Thomas is on top of that and thinking about that. And Very aware of what that falls. If he gets if he gets ahead of the curve on some of the stuff that we've got back on, I think we're going to get that, and it will help us a lot. And maybe some direction for Randall and Jason, who are reporting regularly, to maybe do a written report ahead of time too. You know, that might help so then when they get out a lot faster. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, don't sell yourself short, Tom. I hear you're doing really well. So, no. I just I think we just have a lot of topics being covered up. I mean, we had 20 agenda items a night every other week, and for a while it was 20 agenda items a night every week when I started. So it's just, and every single time you walk away with 10 or 12 to do things with the day to day work. So it's just filling. I think eventually we're going to get ahead of this. It's just we had it ahead of this. And Tom is many, many things, but he's not, at least I don't, I'm unaware of you being a mind reader. Uh, and so we all come in to these topics with our own questions and information that we're looking for that, you know, maybe they can predict that we're going to be looking for something and, and go out and seek that information. But a lot of times we're going to ask a question and it's going to be that they have to go out and look for information. So, yeah, um, I mean, that's really hard. Part of the work session meeting, business meeting, it's great in concept. There's requests every day. Hey, can I get on the next agenda meeting? Can I get yeah. Or because I'm going for a grant. Oh well, can you wait for the following? No, 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 the deadline's before the next meeting. Right. Yeah. Okay, that that blows that blows you into that. And then you deal with, well, it's just a the next month it's just a work session meeting. Well, you let X committee do it last month. Okay, you're right. There's well, something in concept you can handle the day to day, but then take on we had a commitment to one big topic a month, you know, and I think maybe not as necessarily to doing the day to day business with better reporting, better information, but then just acknowledge, okay, we're only doing the bare bones and we're going to address. So, like tonight, you would have said, okay, Dean, I hear it. We're going to put this on April 15th. We don't have time to deal with it, but let's do We're only going to deal with this conceptual issue where, you know, you might have said to Howard, okay, I like your idea of the chat, but we're going to deal with that in it. Not, not in this meeting. So that way you can kind of, you can rearrange, if you know all the agenda items ahead of time, you can rearrange. One of the things you and I talked about was having a deadline, deadline for items, like the Monday before the meeting. So that, that way we have a whole week to prepare that packet instead of 24 hours. Less. And then the board has a whole week to ask questions before the meeting to say, oh, okay, here's the packet a week ahead. What are the questions? You know, that, that way you have time to ask questions outside, you know, still in line with open meeting law and get those, it gives me time to get those answers so we're not scrambling in real time. Well, yeah, because we got that, the packet yesterday. Exactly. Yeah. Ultimately, I would love to have one meeting a month. I don't know that it's possible without that meeting going until midnight or later. And I don't want that. So I lean to maybe a, a Duncan type set up a which where we try to split it out, have most of our business done in one, and then yeah, get with the extra stuff that we need. Has the board gotten out what they want to say? They have um, I don't have to have my own way. A compromise yeah. is fine. Donna's. I thought the coding might be interested since I take minutes for three of the select boards, um, Cambridge and Underhill, Jericho, 
hear what they do. I, it, it is true that yours tend to be longer on average, I'd say, than theirs, but not like dramatically longer. And they do all these twice a month. So it's not, it's not unusual. But, mm -hmm. Yeah, I would just make the point that we're sitting here right now, and we, in, during the course of this meeting, we scheduled how many other meetings? Right. Three. <laughs> Three other meetings. Well, even, wait, even if well, we went to one select board meeting a month, we'd still be. We yeah. all want to be employees. Right, Tony? Right. The yeah. Board of Abatement is requested. <laughs> yeah. We owe it to that person. Yeah. Part of the and be honest, Evan, you like changing. I am out of pay that you get for this job. <laughs> And then the yeah. other one is our planning prioritization. But surprised nobody voted for I'm disappointed. I thought you were gonna propose I was hoping to get to like 40 yeah. cents an hour. I could I couldn't very no. well propose it. A raise. <laughs> I mean, I'm not Montpelier or Washington. I didn't do that. <laughs> I don't think any of us do it for that. So no, no, no. <laughs> yes. I'm so in, in concept, uh, <laughs> do you want to try Duncan's way for a month? Revisit it. I don't like I said a, a couple minutes ago. You know, like you know me, I I don't have to have them all play. I just uh, I, I get the discussion started, and we can find some kind of compromise, and maybe a Duncan solution is is better, and uh, it can maybe cut down some of the time. And we don't have to make a decision to make. No, certainly no. Not. But um, that would help guide thinking agendas a little bit better if the board kind of said that they wanted. The first Monday of the month to be heavy business. The second one, third Monday of the month to be heavy planning. That would just well, fine. I'll make my motion. I'll, I'll make. It, motion. I don't even need a motion. It's just okay, a concept. Just, just the concept. Think, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's, 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 I have no problem. I think Tom has a good idea too, which we actually tried at one point was having a cutoff date for getting yes added well. to the agenda. Yeah, and so that enables you to get a. a more detailed report out earlier, hopefully. Mm -hmm. and that once we get caught up, you know, I, I don't want to put a lot of pressure on you, but I also want to see an end to your 12 30 Sunday night things at some yeah. point in time. You know I mean, mean, I'm, I'm really excited about that. it. If the, if the agenda is due on Monday and I have all the items, then say I'm doing it while my kids are watching TV, you know, I'm sitting there reading emails anyway, then might as well type up the report while I'm hanging out. And then you have it on. Tuesday at midnight, you know, because I'm what that's just happened to do when I'm away. But at least it's Tuesday, and then you have till the following Monday. Probably, yeah. But, yeah, you know, that's what matters is the time between you coming out and the decision to be made. Well, yeah. that may well help the thing that you're talking about is the ability to digest and if you have a question. Yeah. Yes. Call out and say, yeah. what do you mean by this? Yeah, yeah. this cutoff, you're going to put that on the town website. I think we need to do a big information campaign, yeah. especially with committees. Yeah. I think the grants are going to be the biggest thing that are going to be hard pressed. Right. That, you know, any event that. Yeah, everybody so, needs to know that. So, what is the wishes of the board there? Is it to encourage committees to have everything one week before the meeting at the deadline? Yeah. I would yeah. say, yeah, yeah, we're going to get on the agenda. Okay. We can always add something to the agenda if we absolutely need to but i think <clears throat> yeah just this is, all, this is space for addition right that's what that's for having a policy that that needs to be in a week before we'll get it in a week before it's not technically it's a written, written policy but right can you put together an email for the chairs of the boards absolutely and there's members of the general public too and yeah, yeah. yeah. Facebook. yeah. Yeah, at a minimum, a web page, a Facebook page. Yeah, that takes time. Oh, the Chinese. Are I, I think I think we I think we've beaten this item, uh, and there's it's probably gonna come up again for sure. But I just find TikTok. You want to get a town of Johnson TikTok page? Yeah, we'll get you running it. <laughs> You're gonna be a ticker talking now. <laughs> Yeah. We have one more. No way. So I have one more item before the executive session, and that is to. <laughs> Formally request the planning commission to. Could you take this one away? Yeah. So everybody remembers the town meeting that Paul stood up and, and asked for an advisory vote to have the select board institute the process for changing the four base code, base code. to allow for flood related improvements. 
I think it really starts with the planning commission. So my my motion would be to formally request of the planning commission that they prepare a proposed amendment to the bylaw to the bylaws the form based code. That is a motion. We have a motion. I would like that. I think that's a motion. A second. Any further discussion? I will vote for it. Uh, I will also just say that we are uh, sort of doubling down on the idea that the planning commission needs to come and ask us for permission to work on something by doing this. Uh, so if we want the planning commission to be more proactive. We may need to send another message at some point. Sure. And well, how is this not sending a message that we want you to be more proactive, please? Well, because you come forward with what you know, and, and the way that that Paul brought it up, I think he admitted was was sort of like a last minute thing that he had thought of to bring up at a kind of meeting. Mm -hmm. um, but I think he, you know, if if he understood that the planning commission was able to just make suggestions like this and bring it forward to us, he would have done that and not necessarily gone about it the way that he did. Just, you know, speaking from my experience being on the planning commission, mm -hmm. um, the way that he did go about it was to come and, you know, say, do we need a, a you know, something from the voters to ask the select board to get this process started. I think, again, it, it comes back to what I was saying earlier. There is a confusion on the planning commission of do they need to be pulled by the select board to work on a thing or can they do that type of planning proactively? The planning commission has statutory responsibility. I was just going to say that. Totally different from the select board. Can't instruct them to do anything. Really? I mean, uh, the entire Main Street project was an outgrowth of the planning commission originally, which became a Main Street subcommittee, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it's it's relatively, if that's the perspective of the planning commission, it's relatively recent. These were conversations that we were having when I was on the board, um, you know, about are these things that the planning commission can do? Um, for example, make a statement in you know in support of more housing. Uh, is that something that we can do, or do we need the select board to particularly request, like we're about to do, that that we work on that? Again, I I'm going to vote for this motion. I just wanted to make the point that we're not really helping the lack of clarity uh, by going through this. I think that's a point well taken, and I think we need to have the planning commission in the room on one of our second Monday meetings and all of our committees, because I think they need more clarity and more appreciation and more members have that. I could all be done once a year. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's a motion of a second. And thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. It seems like communication. It that's keeps just coming like, back. That's just like outside the field. It keeps coming uh, back. Any what? further discussion? I have to come in from Grace Pickup because she was involved in the planning commission too. And there was a level of frustration by the amount of paperwork and research that they were doing, not really being published nor read, received by some of the select board members. And then when it was read, there was comments like, oh, this is. So there is a frustration from there from some of the members that their work wasn't didn't feel valued. So I think Paul's comments the kind of need to change correctly and sort of are built on that foundation. Yeah. And and I would like to fix that. Yeah. Our relationship to all our and that may well be self Scott, and I appreciate that as as being the perspective that that Kim might have had and others might have had. Having said that, I will say this the planning commission has statutory roles and responsibility that are well defined, as do we. So it it, it doesn't absolutely follow that the work of the planning commission is going to be accepted and approved by the select board. For example, the town plan, the town plan is prepared and submitted to the select board for approval. 
the select board can make changes to the plan, it has to go back to the planning commission to review additional public hearings, et cetera. But all I'm saying is there may be a slight disconnect between what the planning commission wants and the select board. That's right. Yeah, I understand. From the human dollar and the training members, that's what I'm sort of there. Yeah. By hearing the conversations. Well, it's not the first time I've heard that conversation, for sure. Thank you. Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. We have one last item. Who me to reach out to them? That is an executive session, and do we have any potential motions coming in? Possible. It's always possible. So there's probably probably a potential not. action item coming out of it, but I can let you know what that is if you're good with that. So I would entertain a motion to enter into executive session. I would love to, and I, I would like hey, Scott. that to be Thank you. positive Thank you. and proactive, not not instructing the board to do it. It's we'd like you to do it based on yeah, because your it, comment. And, and I think what I'm actually going to suggest is if you mind well, going into, I'm not sure if there's going to be a hearing or not. I can. They, they, they were yeah. kissing and I told you.